Rhodes looking to ruin this Scarlet Knight. 2000 marks the long-awaited return to dominance of the Miami Hurricanes, or so many think. The Canes are 2-1 and one in the early going, showing flashes of becoming a team that can be a gale force in the national picture. Tonight, they visit the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, who have a home win streak in hand and upset on their minds. Welcome to the birthplace of college football, Piscataway, New Jersey, where 131 years ago, Rutgers beat Princeton 6-4. The tradition continues tonight, nationally ranked Miami and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And welcome aboard, everybody. Mike Crispino, John Kinjemi. Miami coming in here off a huge win at West Virginia by 37 points, looking ahead perhaps to Florida State. They've won all seven against Rutgers. They go for number eight with a top 20 pass defense, sixth in the country in interceptions. On offense, John, they like to go up top. They can beat you up there, too. And they can put points on the scoreboard. They're averaging 48 points per game. And quarterback Ken Dorsey, 15 touchdowns, only one interception in his six starts. He's played beautifully. A dynamic secondary led by Leonard Myers, nine career interceptions two for touchdowns he is something else yeah, and this defense can put points on the board too last week three picks two picks against West Virginia three went for scores but they're tough tenacious and fast the only problem is they love to gamble on the corner Leonard Myers and Mike Rump they can't take chances against this pass happy offense if they do Rutgers can score easily on the outside and Dan Morgan of course the Buckers award candidate plays linebacker this team, you can run on this team now and again. You really can. You see right there, 145 yards are giving up on the ground. The only problem with that is Rutgers loves to throw the football, and you said Dan Morgan leads the defense. All right, now Terry Shea, Scarlet Knights, might not be playing for his job tonight, but perhaps down the road, and they play tonight without their outstanding senior quarterback, Mike McMahon. Yeah, Chad Swank, he gets the unenviable task of going up against this tough, tough UM defense. Last year, he played against them. Nine sacks, only 51 yards passing. You see his career stats, only three touchdowns to five interceptions, but he was a sore young man last year because he hit the turf nine times. It was a tough night for him. You see last season, 55 to nothing. Miami's offense racked up 450 yards rushing, or total yards, compared to 64 yards for Rutgers, and you see there, he was sacked nine times. It's going to be a rough, rough night if he continues those statistics. One thing Rutgers does well is turn other teams over there. Best in the Big East in turnover ratio. Fourth in the country. They'll need more of that tonight against Miami. Ken Dorsey, Santana Moss and company, ready to joust with Rutgers. Last time the Knights beat a ranked opponent, 1988 at Penn State. They'll try to repeat the feat tonight. Football from Rutgers Stadium, Miami, and the Scarlet Knights. And on the sidelines tonight with us, Rob Brooks. Rob? Thanks, Mike. In 1999, injuries decimated the Scarlet Knights squad. Here in week five of the 2000 season, they've already once again begun to take their toll. Besides starting quarterback Mike McMahon, they're without McCormick and Leonard. Between those two, they have 56 tackles and three sacks. Will Burnett also has two sacks. Now, if you add to that the fact that starting offensive backs, fullback and halfback, they will see limited duty this evening. The Scarlet Knights could be starting this one with one hand tied behind their back, Mike. All right, Rob, we'll see how they handle it. Game time temperature 62 degrees. Clear and cool night here in New Jersey. The wind not much of a factor. Eight miles per hour out of the southwest. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers at 2-2. 0-2 two and two. Oh and two in the conference after opening up at 2-0. and oh. Terry Shea needing to win a big game against a ranked opponent perhaps to take a little heat off him. And Miami? They could be looking ahead to Florida State. They're second in the country. That's coming up next week. Butch Davis, last two meetings have been all Miami. Yeah, they really have. They've done a good job offensively against Rutgers. The Hurricanes have scored 50 points or more in four of the last five, five games, including a 55 to nothing shellacking last year. And as we said, the quarterback had difficulty. So Butch Davis and that staff, they want to come out, set the tone early, and continue their success. Miami has won the toss. They'll receive... To our left. And to kick it off for Rutgers, Todd Sievers on the return for Miami tonight. Jones wearing number one. Daryl Jones. 
And Andre Johnson, a freshman, 6'3", 200 pounds, wearing number five. Steve Baroni does the kicking for Rutgers, wearing number 14. He's a junior. As the Scarlet Knights in their scarlet red, white trim, black pants. Get ready to do battle with Miami. The Hurricanes have won all seven meetings. This is the only team in the Big East that Rutgers has never defeated. Could tonight be the night? Here's the kick from Barone. Bouncing at the seven, picked up there. And on the return, losing his footing. Was Andre Johnson, the wide receiver, a return of about 10 yards. Miami in their white uniforms, new look this year, the green pants and the orange trim. Ken Dorsey, number 11, will do the quarterbacking for Butch Davis. Impressive numbers, John Kajemi, over 50%, and no interceptions this year. On first down, the Canes with a man in motion, and the pass by Dorsey caught, and a gain of close to nine yards. That's Najee Davenport, who came out of the backfield for a big gain. James Jackson, the tailback, one to watch in the backfield. 172 yards on the season for him. Reggie Wayne on the outside, and Santana Moss, two outstanding receivers. Joaquin Gonzalez anchors that offensive line wearing number 73. Gonzalez, 6'5", 290, is a junior. On second and short, the handoff and the first down made. James Jackson, the senior, a gain of about four. On the defensive line, Tom Petko out of Quakertown, Pennsylvania, will play the nose tackle tonight for Terry Shea. Wes Robertson, one of the best tacklers you will see in the Big East. At one linebacker from Camden, New Jersey. Brandon Haw on the corner. Lots of pressure on the cornerbacks. Dwayne Thompson and Brandon Haw tonight with these sensational receivers of Miami. They have a first down. Back is Dorsey. Hit as he throws and overthrowing his man. Breaking through on the rush. Greg Pismolka. Nearly got to Dorsey and sacked him. Yeah, he's always in the defensive backfield. Big number 99 up front coming through. He's being blocked on the outside by Mercer, but he makes Ken Dorsey play, pay in the backfield. The biggest thing on the first two out of three downs, you see Nige Davenport and James Jackson in a tandem in the backfield. Nige doing a great job on blocking one play and then catching a ball in the flat on the other. Miami on second down, the handoff to Jackson. Penalty flag down. Jackson cuts it upfield for a gain of close to 10, but there might have been an offensive penalty there as the flag went down almost immediately. Referee tonight is Jack Kramer. It's offside on Rutgers. The line judge, George Geis, spotted that. And Butch Davis. Defense, the penalty is declined. Second down. They will decline the penalty. Defensive coordinator, Dennis Crean, not happy with that. The Knights have not been penalized very much this year. In fact, least in the Big East. 17 times for 150 yards. So it will be second and one after the nine yard gain by James Jackson. The inside handoff. Good for a first down. Najee Davenport, the junior from Miami, Florida. A gain of four. A tackle by Wesley Robertson. Yeah, Wes Robinson from that weak side linebacker position comes in with the tackle. He has 40 total tackles on the year, and you'll see more of that out of Najee Davenport now that they limed him back up at the fullback spot. You might see a little bit more running out of that fullback position. High formation for Miami. Jackson and Davenport split behind him and flags go up again. It looked as if Rutgers jumped, but there might have been movement in that Miami offensive line. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. So the offensive line of Miami was moving. Yeah, the right side, especially Joaquin Gonzalez and Martin Bibla, a little excited on that pass play on first down. They got in their stance, a little bit of a lean backwards. That'll get you every time. Terry Shea 
10 and 38 as a Big East coach at Rutgers. Dorsey's going up top. He's got Moss, and Moss made the catch. And Santana Moss outleaped the corners of Rutgers. Huge gain as Miami as they like to do, goes up top for a gain of 41. We'll give credit to Santana Moss. Ken Dorsey steps up in the pocket, but did not throw his best pass. Let's give all the credit to Santana Moss. He gets his body in a position and goes up and gets the football at its highest point. Terrific, terrific catch by Santana Moss. Brandon Hall was on the coverage just a split second too late. Dorsey with a handoff inside Davenport, and he is smothered. First in on the tackle, Mitchell Davis, the sophomore linebacker from Voorhees, New Jersey. So Rutgers, as Rob Brooks told you, without three outstanding defensive players tonight, Dennis McCormack and Nate Leonard, two of the linebackers, stepping in that time, Mitchell Davis to make the stop. Second and nine, we're just underway, first quarter. Dorsey steps back to throw. It's a little screen on the right side. Lots of room for James Jackson, and he's in for a touchdown. James Jackson nearly went untouched. Beautifully conceived screen to the right. Dorsey set it up nicely with the drop, and Miami draws first blood. Great play call that time on the offensive side, but credit those offensive linemen for getting out in front. Ken Dorsey made the defense, drew him in the offensive backfield, and Brett Romberg and Martin Bibla on the front, out in front of James Jackson. It's 6-0 Hurricanes. Canes on for the extra point, and flags go up again. Todd Seavers will do the kicking, wearing number 16, and here's the discussion. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution on the defense, Penalty is half the distance to the goal. So a little confusion on the Rutgers defensive side of the ball. An illegal substitution. Miami will attempt the extra point, this time from the nine-yard line. It's down, it's up, and it's good. The Hurricanes in three minutes with James Jackson going in on the screen pass from Ken Dorsey have broken on top 7-0. We'll return, you're watching Saturday Night Football. This is the Big East on ESPN Plus. To begin the game, three minutes in, Miami has seven on the board. 80 plays, 80 yards. Santana Moss with a 41-yard reception. James Jackson on the screen from 18 yards out. And so the Hurricanes, who have racked up a Big East record of 45 and 10, bidding to win their eighth in a row against Rutgers, have the early lead. Back to receive the kickoff for Rutgers. Number 86, David Stringer. It's short. Taken about the 25-yard line by number 33 and down hard. He goes. Yeah, big time play by Ken Dorsey. Watch the depth and the timing of the screenplay. It was man coverage, but credit the big uglies out in front. Martin Bibla, number 65, and Brett Romberg, the center, 66, did a terrific job in kicking out any penetration, any defenders in the way, and James Jackson goes in untouched. Chad Schwenk takes over for Mike McMahon, as we told you at the top of the broadcast, sore shoulder. Swank had some success at the end of last season. This year, 14 of 32, hasn't thrown for a score yet. Nobody behind him in the backfield. You'll see a lot of that tonight. He rolls right, he throws, and he completes the pass. Josh Hobbs, a wide receiver, the sophomore from Somerville, New Jersey. Jason Oheen of Farmingdale, New York, one of the running backs, Dennis Thomas at fullback. Walter King of the split end. Rich Mazza, the left guard from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, anchoring the Rutgers offensive line for Terry Shea. It's second and four after a gain of six on Schwenk's first pass. Now they go with a single back behind him, two wide outs to the left. Quick fade, quick throw. First down and out of bounds. 
Walter King, the senior wideout for Miami. Damian Lewis, one of the front four, along with William Joseph Quincy Hibbs, Jamal Green, who's a New Jersey product, and Dan Morgan, the Butkus candidate out of Coral Springs, Florida, reminds a lot of people of Zach Thomas. And this Miami secondary dynamic, Edward Reed, among others, can take it back all the way against you. They are aggressive, and they will take chances. Swank handoff inside, driving the pile forward for a gain of just about a yard that time. On the carry, it was Dennis Thomas, the junior from Salem, New Jersey. Yeah, and Chris Campbell on the defensive side that time, coming up with a big play from the strong side linebacker position. He comes into the game with 28 total tackles. He's a guy that compliments Dan Morgan on the strong side. A number of all Big East players in this Miami roster, 11 first and second teamers returning for Butch Davis. They're expecting to have a good year. Swank under pressure, steps up, taken down, short gain, but a good decision. Yeah, nice job that time by the quarterback, Chad Swank. If they're going to have a chance to stay in this game with Miami, they're going to have to beat man coverage, exactly what they faced on that down, and they're going to have to be very successful three-step drops. This, is, uh, this time right here, Chad Swank did the smart thing. He found a crease, knew it was man coverage, tried to get as many yards as he could before he was tackled. Swank is 6'2", 200. He can see over the uh, defensive line. Recruited by Pitt and Penn State before coming here. Quick throw. And the pass incomplete intended for L.J. Smith, the tight end. And that will bring up a fourth and eight for Rutgers. So one first down, and out they go. The Rutgers punt team in. Mike Barr, the sophomore, will do the kicking. And here's where Miami can hurt you. Santana Moss, one of the outstanding punt returners in the country. And also they can block kicks. 38 kicks have been blocked under Butch Davis. Barr is back. Matt Moss by himself. High snap. He gets it off. It's a low kick. It will land at the 30 and take a Rutgers bounce. Down inside the 15 to the 11-yard line. So what turned out to be a good kick after a poor start Attention fans. for Mike Barr, puts Miami deep in their own territory. And the man with the golden arm from Pittsburgh, John Congemi, are here in Miami. You can appreciate what Ken Dorsey's been doing. He's been doing a great job. You're, there you see 106 consecutive pass attempts without an interception, and that only uh, a couple shy of a former Heisman Trophy winner, some guy named Gino Toretta back in 92. He hands off this time. James Jackson, who has a touchdown already, James Jackson knocked down at about the 14-yard line by Rutgers. A couple of people in on it. Shaheeb White, defensive Jackson back, up to support. James Jackson has three touchdowns on the season. It's an area where Miami is a little bit thin as far as running backs go. Yeah, Portis is down, Clinton Portis is down, but this is a guy that is definitely in the ball game. You know, he's only had one game under 50% passing. He's had at least one touchdown pass in each one of his six starts. Clinton Portis out perhaps for the season. Rolling, Dorsey with time, fires it in, and he's got that man, Reggie Wayne, the all-time leading receiver in Miami history, which is impressive considering all those great receivers they've had. They've had some great wide receivers, but this guy tops tops the charts in all-time receptions with 146, and currently he's third in receiving yards with over 2,025 yards. So uh, this guy can make it happen on the outside. Reggie Wayne, first down reception. Miami's moved to the 23. Dorsey back, inside handoff. Jackson breaking through to daylight, and that's a gain of 12. James Jackson. Off to a great start as Miami extraditing themselves from deep in their own territory. Take a look at the offensive line, Mike. They do a great job, and Nige Davenport, a great kickout block on Mitch Davis down the defensive field. Just a great surge from that offensive line. Huge running room for James Jackson. He can do and run wherever he'd like to. Decides to go up the field, and there you see number six, Santana Moss, also pitching in on a block. Torrance Hedgie made the tackle. Bang down that time after a short gain. 
by Nate Cologne. Was Jackson bringing up a second and nine. Early on, Miami has shown the ability to run the ball tonight. 36 yards, although on the season they have not been outstanding in that category. No, they haven't. They've been inconsistent up front, and they haven't had running backs hit the hole with authority tonight. A lot of running room between the tackles. Down the sideline goes James Jackson for another first down, and Miami chewing up big chunks of yardage here in the first quarter. A nice little wrinkle that time by the University of Miami. They have a fullback that's a threat tonight, Nij Davenport, to run the football. They decide to fake it inside, flip it outside to James Jackson, and he just has a lot of room on the perimeter down the Miami sideline, and Jackson's having a, a terrific night early on. James Jackson already 43 yards and six carries. Seven yards a carry. Dorsey back off the fake. In the flat, it's Davenport. Cuts inside. A couple of other fakes taken down by four red shirts. Among them, Wes Robertson, the linebacker. So Davenport getting an opportunity to play as the offense of Miami without Will McPartland. Well, you like the mix of what Miami's doing right now. They're not putting a lot of pressure on Ken Dorsey. They're getting a lot of running room. They're making the easy pitch and catch throws into the flat, and then they're going to take the shot down the field with Santana Moss. Wide receivers, two of them split left, eye formation behind Dorsey. Quick look, quick throw, and Santana Moss couldn't come up with it. Pass was intended for Santana Moss. That sets up a third and four for Miami at the 45 yard line well, Mike that's what they want they want that matchup on the outside man to man they'll take Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne against anybody the Rutgers defense puts on the outside Ken Dorsey early on the on the evening five of seven for 82 yards he's on fire right now key early play for Rutgers they set up like they're going to blitz Dorsey he checks off two wide outs left Picks it up, throws it, has a man, eludes a tackler, and a first down. Nifty move that time on the outside. Made by Daryl Jones, the junior from Dallas. Looked as if he'd be stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but good enough, six yards for a first down. Yeah, you always talk about Santana Moss and Reggie Darryl Wayne, Jones. but Daryl Jones has terrific speed on the outside. No matter who Miami puts in at the skill positions, they can make you miss. Just a great catch, great concentration. Now he knows where the first down marker is. He alertly gets out of bounds after he gets the first down. Nice pitch and catch that time by Miami. Wes Lysak missed that time. Miami. Racking up yardage, 136 yards. Dorsey steps up on the post pattern and almost intercepted. Dorsey threw it up for grabs and nearly picked off by Brandon Hall. Yeah, Brandon Hall on the outside in nice position, but you gotta like what Daryl Jones did. He fought for the football, gave Hall, he had to go through Daryl Jones to get the interception. Miami taking a shot downfield. They have eight first downs so far in this first quarter, but watch what he does on the inside, does Daryl Jones. He makes Hall go around him or over him to get the interception. Nice play by the receiver and good positioning by Hall. Second and 10, 7 10 remaining. First quarter. In motion, Santana Moss. Dorsey back, inside handoff. Nice cut by Jackson. Got a first down and more. Inside the 30 to the 20. Cuts it into the end zone for a James touchdown. Jackson, Miami touchdown. 39 yards for James Jackson, eluding several Scarlet Knights tacklers, and Miami has burst to a 13 nothing lead. Well, already in this first half or first quarter, James Jackson 82 yards that one a 39 yard run and credit that offensive line they blew everybody back of the scarlet knight defense and a great job you see ken dorsey saying hey we can do whatever we want against this defense right now the extra point attempt is good miami 14 nothing in the opening eight minutes you're watching saturday night football big east football on ESPN Plus. James Jackson's been outstanding. Time that James Jackson has scored two touchdowns in a game. He's got two tonight. Fifth on Miami. His all-time rushing list coming into the season is going well over the 2,000-yard mark. Ten plays, 82 yards. Miami rolling, 162 yards 
on the first two drives. Well, this team's explosive, and they've been waiting for this back, James Jackson, to come out and really bust out, have a, a welcome to the party in year 2000. It looks like tonight is his night. We mentioned they have Clinton Portis, the sophomore who is out, broke three toes in his foot at practice this week, could be out for the season, so an opportune time for James Jackson to have an outstanding game. On the return, up to about the 16-yard line, it is taken by Jared Friday, by Andre Johnson. or Dennis Thomas, pardon me. Dennis Thomas, the junior running back from Salem, New Jersey. But Terry Shea's got some serious organizing to do now. His team down two scores early in this game. It's a tough spot for a young quarterback, too. Chad Swain coming into this game. He started against Miami last year, but now he comes in. Not a lot of time gone in this game. 6.51 left to go in the first quarter, and he's already down 14 points. So he's going to have to come back, try to regroup, make a couple first downs, and get those chains moving. First and 10 from the 17 for Rutgers. The quick inside handoff and a good gain, breaking it up and good for a first down. As some running room finally for Rutgers, Dennis Thomas. Yeah, Dennis Thomas hitting it hard, but credit Rich Mazza, number 55, coming in and making a nice block on Dan Morgan, the middle linebacker. That springs him ahead for the first down. Gerald Weaver, the freshman from Miami, made the tackle. So the second first down for Rutgers, and now they've got some operating room at their 30-yard line. Just underway from Piscataway. Outside it goes. The little cutback, breaking two tackles, and nifty footwork that time by Errol Johnson, the wide receiver, the sophomore from Palo Alto, one of the captains tonight. And that good for a gain of a little more than five. Nice tippy toe on the outside by Johnson, but the one thing he always has to do is keep his head on a swivel. After he makes the first move on the outside against Mike Rump, goes inside. Watch this blur coming from the middle. That's number 44, Dan Morgan coming from the inside. I think the last play kind of upset Dan. He gets back at Rutgers there. Second all, all Big East last year, Dan Morgan. All kinds of motion on second and five. We already showed you graphically how Rutgers has not been penalized very much this year. In fact, they are the least penalized team in the conference. However, a couple of early procedure calls against them. Yeah, and Mike, this is something you can't do against a team maybe that has better skill position players than you that has a quick strike ability as Miami's offense does. You can't hurt yourself. Rutgers getting into the huddle right now. They know they cannot do that. And Terry Shea, obviously, has done a good job up until this point. Terry Shea trying to beat Miami for the first time in Rutgers history tonight. Team down two scores, Schwenk back, it's deflected, nearly intercepted, but it's caught by Walter King. Somehow he got his hands on it. That could have been serious trouble. And that's great concentration on the outside by Walter King. The ball was batted at the line of scrimmage. It actually goes through Leonard Myers' hand. He thought he had his third interception on the season. You see right there, it's batted down by big number 94, William Joseph. He got a big piece of it, but the ball had enough mustard to get outside, goes through Leonard Myers, and into the hands of Walter King for positive yardage. Third and three. Miami shifting strong left. Left alone out there, Chad Schwenk by himself. Back to pass, quick throw, good for a first down. Out in the left flat, the reception made by L.J. Smith is tight end. Well-conceived play. Yeah, and a big target, the uh, tight end, L.J. Smith. 6'4", 225 pounds. He comes into the game with 15 receptions for 139 yards. Nice play versus man coverage. Miami bringing more people than Rutgers can block, but you gotta find the open man in that situation. He had leverage on the outside against Edward Reed. First down for the Scarlet Knights. From the 45, once again, all by himself back there. Chad Schwenk throws it out in the flat and complete for a gain of about five. There's gonna be a flag down, however. Dennis Thomas made the catch. And it's going to be a holding call against Rutgers. So something they cannot afford to do tonight. Rutgers has done already. 
here in the first quarter. They're trying to throw that little hitch screen to the outside, and normally you'll have wide receivers blocking on defensive backs, and Terry Shea upset about the call, but that's what's called on the outside. It looked like one of the wide receivers on the outside right there, 85, L.J. Smith, the tight end, extending his hands to the outside. You'll get called every time if your hands leave your body and try to grab for someone. You see Terry Shea not happy about the call, and that's the kind of thing that hurts a Rutgers team. They get a little momentum going, and bang, you get a penalty. You're back behind your own 40-yard line. Well, the Hurricanes have knocked the Scarlet Knights back on their heels early. Knights trying to answer. Schwenk drops, steps in, throws, complete. Picks up about half of the yardage. Josh Hobbs, the sophomore wide receiver from Somerville, New Jersey. Yeah, Josh Hobbs doing a nice job just idling down and actually just slowing his body down. He wants to throttle down right here. The ball behind him, but he settles his body down and makes the catch. Good concentration that time in the Miami secondary. One thing Rutgers has done under Terry Shea, they have recruited in New Jersey. 54 of the 97 that came to spring practice from the state. Got to get the best ones. Matt is Schwenk. The throw knocked down that time in the middle of the line by Matt Walters, the big six foot five inch. 265 pounder he got his hands up and knocked it down yeah Matt Walters replacing the injured Damian Lewis who who was out tonight but doing a nice job I mean, he's a big frame 6'5 260 he can get up and bat footballs down but this offensive line needs to start punching some people in the chest you see it actually hits him almost underneath the chin strap so offensive line need to get those players hands down those defensive linemen can't catch the ball. You know that. <laughs> That's Schwenk why they're playing blitz, defense. Throws beautifully. First down and into Miami territory. Chad Swank got leveled after he delivered by Al Blades, who blitzed from his defensive back position. What a throw by Swank. This is the only way Rutgers is going to be successful. Miami's going to bring more people than they can protect. That's just a sidearm flick to the outside. Great concentration by Earl Johnson going across the middle, but a good job by Chad Swank. He felt the pressure from the free safety, Al Blades. He caught the football, slid to his right, bought enough time to get rid of the football, and it's a first down for the Scarlet Knights. Earl Johnson with the catch. That's a difficult throw for a quarterback. Cross his body. Swank seven of nine for 53 yards. Now it's first and 10 again. Under pressure, threw up the middle. Might have been a little bit of a cross up on the pattern. He was looking for more of a post look from a receiver. Well, that's a bad play by the receiver, and Earl Johnson has to read that. They're in zero coverage, which means there's no one in the middle of the football field. Someone has to break to the middle to replace the free safety. The quarterback saw that, only that time the receiver didn't make the break off. That's just a miscommunication, someone being on the wrong page. If they're going to beat Miami or stay in this football game, they have to make the big plays when they're given the opportunity. Schwenk went 10 for 20 last week for 145. Enjoying a good night tonight. Rolling right, stepping up, has a man down the sideline and just overthrew him. He had number 84, Josh Hobbs, open for a split second. Difficult to make that connection, though. Yeah, tough play. A lot of pressure that time up front. You see the quarterback, Shad Wank, moving to his right, but there's the ISO, just a little wheel route down the right side, trying to hit his wide receiver behind Philip Buchanan, but the ball was thrown out of, out of bounds. A lot of duress in that Rutgers backfield. Third and 10 from the 39. You see they're not in the air against Miami. They're not, not going to let too many passes go into the end zone via the air. They're a top 20 team, pass defense-wise, in the entire country. Swank third and 10, all by himself back there. Blitz coming. Oh, he threw it nearly into the hands of Jonathan Vilma, the linebacker. In fact, he did hit him in the hands. Well, that's why we said earlier you're playing defense for a reason. A uh, couple reasons. One, you're tough, and two, you probably can't catch the ball as well as the offensive guys. But Jonathan Vilma did a nice job of acting like he wanted to get some pressure and then dropping back. Chad Schwenk threw that ball low a little bit right into the chest. Fortunately for Rutgers, it's not a turnover. So back to punt, trying to pin Miami down. It's a high kick. Santana Moss will call for a fair catch, and he'll make the catch at about the 13-yard line of Miami. So Mike Barr's high kick 
Not a long kick, but it pins Miami inside their 20. Second time they have started a drive from inside their 20. Rob Brooks is down on the sidelines for us tonight. Rob, what have you got? Some further injuries on the Rutgers side. First of all, free safety, Nate Cologne has a bruised right knee. He came out on that last possession, was not in for the touchdown. He is going to go back in, but he does have a limp. And Shaheeb White, the starting strong safety, has been stretching his calves the entire time Rutgers had the football, Mike. Thanks to Rob Brooks. Here's James Jackson again, sweeping right. Gain of four on a first down play. As Rutgers combines with Tony Berry, among others, for the tackle, Mitchell Davis, the linebacker, Jackson. 87 rushes, 18 receptions, 105 handles of the ball, and a couple of touchdowns. Well, he said he wanted to be explosive tonight. I think he's living up to the billing. Miami from their 15 on second down. Motion left, hand off to Jackson, running inside and taken down by Mitchell Davis again. He's been everywhere, number 39. Tonight, the sophomore from Voorhees, New Jersey. And it's really surprising, Mike. Mitchell Davis only coming into the game with nine total tackles, a fumble recovery, and a couple breakups. But as you said, he's been scraping around that defensive front, making some big plays for this Rutgers defense. Third and three, and Rutgers needs a big play. Moss split left. Dorsey back looking right. He wants to go up top. Good pattern run and a completion out of bounds. But it's good for a first down to Reggie Wayne, who completely turned his man around. Oh, man. Great double move on the outside. Watch Reggie Wayne. He'll idle down here, act like he's going deep, then gear it down and break to the outside on the comeback. Terrific timing by Dorsey and Reggie Wayne on the outside. You don't become Miami's all-time pass re receiver for nothing. He runs great routes. Most of these receivers get in and out of their routes very crisply. You see there, two receptions for 25 yards on the evening. Tony Berry was on the coverage. Here's the pitch to James Jackson sweeping. Good wall of blockers in front of him. And Jackson on first down is close to another first down. Yeah, you called it, Mike. That time the Miami offensive front, especially the left side, Bryant McKinney and Greg LaFerre, Brett Womberg really getting out in front. Credit Mercer, the tight end as well, getting out in front, providing lots of running room from James Jackson on the outside. Butch Davis you saw there in his sixth year at Miami, 42 and 20. Three teams have never beaten Butch Davis Miami teams. There's the handoff to Davenport. It's a first down up near the 50 yard line. Miami has beaten Rutgers all seven times. Butch Davis 5 0 against BC and Temple. Butch Davis also on the tackle. The team that he's had tough difficulty with, John, is Virginia Tech. 0-5 Miami against the Hokies. Yeah, and Florida State as well, and 0-10 when you combine those two teams together. And those are the teams right now, top five teams that Miami would have to go through if they want to break up into the elite again. Ken Dorsey back to pass. Out in the flat has Davenport. Lots of room to run, and good enough for a first down. Shaheed White along with Dwayne Thompson on the stop. Nigel Davenport has terrific hands for a fullback slash running back tonight. He's running from the fullback spot. Miami loves this play and play action. Just tip it to the tailback. Get your fullback Nigel Davenport outside. Does a great job. Very soft hands for a big guy at uh, 6'2", 235 pounds. Najee pointing to his elbow. Could be a slight problem there. Third long extended drive of the quarter by Miami. Santana Moss in motion. Now stops. Inside handoff to Jackson. Not much there. Jackson the ball carrier. Tackle made by Shaheeb White. Brought down by Shaheeb White. Seconds ticking off in the first quarter. James Jackson scored twice. Once on a screen pass. Once on a 39-yard run. And Mike, he's been the workhorse in this first quarter of the 25 offensive plays Miami has run. 12 of those have gone to number 21, James Jackson. He's a senior, 5'11", 215, and that's the end of the first quarter. Scarlet Knights down 14-0. You're watching Big East football here on ESPN+. Plus. John Kajemi from Rutgers, Miami with two touchdowns in the first. 
Butch Davis, the Miami coach, started two and three last year, then won seven of eight, went to the Gator, beat Georgia Tech. 26th bowl game in Miami history. They hope to go back to another one. And despite that loss to Washington, John, it looks like this team is right on track. Down the field it goes, and there's Reggie Wayne for a big gain inside the 10 yard line. What a receiver he is. Good size, as you mentioned, runs great routes, and he's got great hands. And what a great pass by Ken Dorsey, not breaking stride is Reggie Wayne. He's had at least one reception in 27 consecutive games dating back to 97. Now he's got another one, but take a look at this throw. Just a rope down the middle of the field, a post pattern. Good move on the inside by Reggie Wayne to get about five or 10 more yards, but just great execution from quarterback and wide receiver. Wayne takes a seat. First down, number 13 for Miami. They go up top, they've got a man. Touchdown! Dorsey once again Perfectly placed. Yeah. Miami has their third touchdown of the game. Andre King for six. Just making it look too easy is Ken Dorsey. This time he finds another wide receiver. Andre King wide open on the fade route. That's the fourth different wide receiver Miami has used on the outside. Andre King gets in for the touchdown. That's his first of the year 2000. Dodd Seavers attempting the point after. Great fade route, perfect pass. Good catch from Andre King. The extra point is up, and it is good. Andre King celebrating with the Hurricanes on the sidelines. You're watching Big East football on ESPN+. Plus. King has just scored from Ken Dorsey. He's a member of the Big East All-Academic team last year, and he certainly made it look academic, didn't he? He really water? did. That was easy, a scoring drive. Nine plays, 89 yards, only took three minutes and 18 seconds. You see Dorsey on the drive, four of four, all culminating with that fade route to Andre King. Scarlet Knights shell-shocked by Miami's offensive dominance early. Rutgers had one good drive that did not result in points. Here's the kickoff, and it's taken in the end zone. It will not be run out this time. As David Stringer touches it down in the end zone. Well, there's something you can't teach, and that's speed, and that's exactly what Andre King did. He just ran to the back corner of the end zone. No technique needed. He beats the cornerback on the inside, number 21, Thompson, and then it's just speed and waiting for that football. Ken Dorsey did a nice job putting a lot of air underneath it and letting his wide receiver, Andre King, just run underneath it. Well, Dwayne Thomas there engaged the receiver kind of early in the pattern, and I thought that Andre King used that to get open. Yeah, he had some separation and just pushed off. And you see the total yards here, Mike, 263 yards already racked up against this Rutgers defense. Chad Schwank is going to have to throw it tonight. We knew that would be the case. Here's the rush <laughs> on the run. It's picked off. Miami, they do that very well. And the interception, Marquise Fitzgerald, the junior from St. Petersburg. And that's his first interception. What a great catch defensively for Marquise Fitzgerald under, under pressure by number 91, Matt Walters. He's in the backfield before you can even see what's going on downfield. He beats the, def the offensive lineman right up front, Jeremy Womack. And then a great concentration, great catch by Marquise Fitzgerald gives the Miami Hurricanes instant field position at the 19-yard line. Hurricanes came in sixth in the country in interceptions. They've added to that total. Now the handoff, James Jackson, gaping hole, and Jackson James takes Jackson. advantage for a gain of about four. Yeah, this offensive line doing what they want with the defensive line from Rutgers, really pushing them around. A lot of running room right now for James Jackson to run rampant. He has 102 yards rushing up to this point. Several upsets in the top 25 today. That could change. You can see following turnovers, Miami has capitalized nine of 11 times. Sweep left, all kinds of room for Jackson inside the five. A misdirection play that the Hurricanes ran to perfection. Yeah, they ran it one time towards their sideline. This time they're just faking it inside to Nijay Davenport with a quick pitch on the outside to James Jackson. And Miami very lucky not to be called for a holding call down the field by Reggie Wayne. On the cornerback, it looked like on number 21, Dwayne Thompson. But in any result, no harm, no foul. First and goal at the four-yard line for the Canes. Jackson had a huge rushing day against Temple. 
a couple of years ago, 187 yards. He's well on his way tonight to perhaps breaking his own personal career high. And off inside. Jackson with the ball. Looked like there was some extra motion in there, but no flags down. Tackled by Torrance Heggie. Torrance Heggie made the stop. And Miami knocking on the door again. Yeah, Torrance Hagee coming from the backside. He replaces Brian Bender at that weak, weak side linebacker. You see the Canes territory this, this season in the red zone. They've had 15 opportunities. They've cashed in on 13, nine of them going for touchdowns, and the other four for field goal. Dorsey over his center. Brett Romberg rolling right in the end zone, one-handed, unable to come down with it was Jeremy Shockey, the tight end, sophomore from Oklahoma. That was just a time, Mike, that the wide receiver and running back or the tight end and running back were too close together. There wasn't enough separation. One needs to go to the front pylon. The tight end needs to go to the back pylon to make that throw a little bit easier for Ken Dorsey. Terry Shea down 21-0, hoping for a stop here. Third and two. From inside the five, the man in motion, the hand to Jackson, Jackson inside and into the end zone. Third touchdown for James Jackson, and the Canes are up 27 0. Well, you said it, Mike, three times. He gets pay dirt. James Jackson, some tough running inside the tackle, just puts his head down, goes in behind his big fullback. Nigel Davenport and James Jackson having a terrific. Night, you see Ken Dorsey getting congratulations, and on the other side, Coach Shea doesn't look real happy right now, and, and nor should he, down 27 points. The extra point attempt for the Hurricanes is up, and it is good. Todd Seavers has been perfect, four for four. James Jackson's been near perfect, three for three, touchdown-wise. It's Saturday night. This is Big East football. You're watching on ESPN+. You know, John Congemi, here at Rutgers, where Miami has blitzed the Scarlet Knights in the opening 18 minutes, 28 to nothing, and they have run the ball and passed the ball almost at will. Terry Shea now has to figure out how to get the Scarlet Knights to stop the bleeding hold on to the ball and get something productive done offensively. Well, Rutgers right now just taking a pasting. Miami's offense putting it to them and turnovers cannot help this Rutgers team move the football. They have to establish something through the air with that three-step and five-step drop, but right now Miami in total control of this football game. Booming kickoff by Todd Severs ends up out of the end zone and Rutgers will start on their own 20-yard line. Rob Brooks is with us down on the sideline. Rob? Mike, the Rutgers offensive line is having problems communicating. Center Jeremy Womack and right tackle Julian Ross can't hear each other, so they need Mike Esposito, who is a spot starter tonight, to echo the calls while they're, when they walk up to the line so they can make their blocking assignments, Mike. All right, thanks, Rob. Mike Esposito, who has had to step in for Travis Mills, who went down, the junior, the right guard. It's always tough to step in and start, especially against a quality team like Miami. Here's the handoff inside, a short gain. What a hit that time by number 91 of Miami, Matt Walters. Our condolences tonight to Terry Shea. He lost his mom earlier this week. 84 year, 85 year old Florence passed away in uh, California. And uh, he was on the practice field Wednesday when he learned that his Mom had passed away about 2.30 in the afternoon. It's been a difficult week for him. On the handoff in a big hole that time. Good solid gain. Jason Oheen. About eight yards and close to a first down. Yeah, nice play by the Rutgers offense that time. Trying to fake the pass down the field. Big gaping hole to the right side. You see Oheen making the spin move in green. Cornelius Green, number 98, in on the tackle. He started at the defensive line position. He runs down Oheen from behind, but a nice solid play offensively for Rutgers. Well, Rutgers started out 2-0. Buffalo was one of the teams they beat, ran for 187, but since then, only 90 yards, 30 yards a game in those next three. 
Yeah, and it's been a disaster tonight. Only 22 yards on the ground for Rutgers. And this is a team that likes to throw the football with some quick step, three-step and five-step drops. They have to mix in some running, though, but it's a team that really sets up the run with the pass. Mike McMahon, their senior quarterback, so outstanding. Hurt tonight, sore shoulder, is in uniform. Had passed for 200-plus yards Ladies in all four games. There's been a warning now by the officials, and we have heard some whistles being blown in the stands, and that has created a little confusion out there. There were a couple plays, John, where I thought both teams kind of stopped. Yeah, I was looking for flags myself, to tell you the truth, Mike, and they've got the bands playing quite close to the stadium, a lot of echo. Uh, it's almost like an echo chamber here, so you can hear a lot of different noises, and whistles are definitely one that needs to stop. High formation on third and one for Rutgers. The fake handoff, now the throw, and good coverage. Mike Rumpf, the junior, all over the intended receiver, Dennis Thomas. So Rutgers on third and one, tries to pass, and is unsuccessful. Yeah, no continuity with the play fake on the inside, and really credit the Miami defensive line. They were in the offensive backfield of Rutgers and no timing on the side, and maybe that's the guy that they're looking for to maybe come in, Mike McMahon, but he, we were told uh, it's a game-time decision. He won't go in unless, unless both quarterbacks really go down. Well, he had an MRI on that shoulder. It's been sore. He was sacked in his previous game and hurt. Flag goes down. Santana Moss on the return. Breaks a tackle, still on his feet, up near the 45-yard line. A number of penalty markers are down, however, as Moss, one of the truly fine punt return men in all of the country, 10th, 18 yards of return, is a real weapon. The officials are talking it over. Jack Kramer, the referee, along with the field judge, Richard Street, and it looks like they're pointing towards Miami, who has retreated already. A holding call against Miami. In fact, two different infractions will set them back. Hasn't bothered Butch Davis's team at all tonight. They've started deep in their own territory on a couple of occasions and gone all the way down the field. Yeah, and you have to credit Ken Dorsey and the offensive line for really setting the tone. Ken Dorsey coming out throwing some nice crisp passes and that offensive line has really had their way with the Rutgers defense pushing the defensive line around and leaving gaping holes for James Jackson to run through. Miami sharpening their game for Florida State next week. That'll be a major challenge. Earlier today, John, Florida beaten 47-35 by Mississippi State. Washington, who beat Miami earlier. Holding during the return. Illegal block in the back during the return. So the penalties send Miami back to their own 23. But Washington was beaten by Oregon, which is 20th rank, 23-16. Purdue went down to Penn State as well. Yeah, by two points, Penn State gets their second victory on the young season. And Michigan State at home, ranked 18th coming in, loses by 20, 37-17 to, to Northwestern. So lots of change coming in the top 25. Here's the handoff to Davenport. And he's put down after a short gain on first down. Tackle by Mitch Davis. Mitch Davis in on the tackle. The Scarlet Knights down 28-0. Last time they went three and two, Scarlet Knights was 1993. They came in at two and two, hoping to duplicate that feat. This is the subtle change Miami's making. They'll move number 80, Robert Williams, to the fullback when they want number four, Nigel Davenport, at the tailback position. Dorsey back to throw. Santana Moss with the catch. Good for a first down as Moss. Now, that's a good route. He ran it about three yards beyond the marker, and so he had to come back for it a yard and a half. Still good enough for the first. A very smart receiver in Santana Moss. He knows where the marker is. He comes in and out of his routes very nicely. That time, just the curl route down the field. Easy throw and catch. And over Santana's career, he's averaged 17.8 yards per section. That's over 107 catches. He does a terrific job knowing the situations. 
I formation behind Ken Dorsey. First down from the 35. Dorsey throws in the flat. It's Moss again. Couple of fakes, but run down after a short game. Taken out of bounds by Brandon Haw. The sophomore from Fairmont Heights High School in Maryland. With all the speed Miami has, they love to get to the perimeter. And this is all this is, is really a long sweep. Anytime you can catch a ball around the numbers, Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne and Daryl Jones and Andre King, they love to turn the corner on the outside. And all that is is a sweep play to Miami. Moss is not a big man, 5'10", 180. Here's the handoff to Davenport. Stays on his feet and up near the first down marker. Najee Davenport was down about four yards short of the first down, but stayed on his feet. Excellent balance, and he just might have another first down. Yeah, terrific balance. That time, number two, Tony Berry, the defensive back for Rutgers, comes up and really puts a stop to the play there, taking out the fullback, but a great job, great job of staying on his feet. Najee Davenport moves from that fullback spot to the tailback spot. These two guys are really interchangeable. They can both play the fullback or tailback position. First and 10 from Miami's 46. Dorsey saw something he didn't like, and he will call a timeout. The Canes will talk with Butch Davis about it. 28 nothing, second quarter. This is Big East football on ESPN Plus. The Canes with a 28 nothing lead, second quarter. 10 minutes remaining in the quarter. Ken Dorsey brings him up to the line of scrimmage, first and 10 from the 46. Split backs behind him, now in motion. Here's Dorsey's throw, man open, wide open, and a gain of 24. He threw it down the field, and he had his man, Jeremy Shockey, wide open. Rob Brooks is standing by with something from the sidelines. Rob? Hey, Mike, James Jackson is having a career night, and he has to. He and Naj Davenport are two of only three backs that made the trip. The other three backs that they list the starters are all back in Coral Gables with an injury. Now, the only other back that traveled is Jared Payton, who are they hoping to redshirt this season. They don't want to bring him into the game because they like him to keep his eligibility, so expect to see more of James Jackson. And Najee Davenport. Thanks, Rob. Davenport, another sizable first down gain. So when you're gaining big yardage on first down, it makes second down calls so much easier. Boy, it sure makes it easier. You see hurricane damage. Miami tonight, 142 yards rushing. The Rutgers' is only total yard is 83 yards. But on that last play, Jeremy Shockey, the play before the Najee Davenport run, just a huge hole down the middle of the field. Nice throw and catch over the top of the Rutgers linebackers. Second and five. Moss in motion, now he waits for us. He hands to Davenport. Davenport powering down for a gain of about four, close to a first down. And he may have it. He's white also on the stop. About a yard short, it looks like. Nige does a nice job on his own to the outside, but take a look at the point of attack. Just great blocking by the fullback. Also, number 80, Robert Williams and Bryant McKinney, number 78, doing a nice job of moving the Rutgers defensive people off the line of scrimmage. You got to credit this offensive line. Anytime a running back isn't getting touched till he's two, three, four yards down the field, it's the offensive line that does that. Third and short, Dorsey's going to throw it. Can't find anybody, and he's taken down. So a sack and a big play by Wes Robertson. Good coverage downfield that time by the Scarlet Knights secondary. And now Miami will decide on fourth and three how they'll handle this. Ken Dorsey wanting to go to Santana Moss but was caught from behind by Wes Robertson. Credit the defensive backfield, Shaheeb White, number one, did a nice job locking up with Santana Moss and it ends up being a sack for Wes Robinson. So the 28 point lead in fourth and three, Miami goes for it at the 22 yard line. Dorsey goes up top, he's got his man in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Reggie Wayne tight roped it and he scores. Well there's not much to fear when you're leading the game as big as Miami does. They gamble on fourth down, you really can't call it a gamble. They wanna go for the big play and Reggie Wayne does a terrific job 
just touching down with the football inbounds. A nice throw from Ken Dorsey. The pump fake outside. Reggie Wayne goes down, out, and up for the score. Makes the score 34 to nothing. Miami over Rutgers. They went for it all on fourth and three, and Reggie Wayne delivered. Ken Dorsey, perfect pass. Extra point is good. Miami 35. Rutgers nothing. The all-time leading receiver in hurricane history, and there's a reason. And Ken Dorsey just makes it look easy. Watch the punt fake to the outside. Just a little give and go there. And then he throws it to the back of the end zone. Watch Reggie Wayne. Does he get a foot in? Yes, he does. Perfect timing. Pitch and catch to the outside. A double route with Santana Moss. But the down, out, and up on the outside. Just a sprint. I don't know what number 24 Brendan Haw is doing. But he's just watching as number 87 Reggie Wayne runs right by him for six. Brandon Haw on the coverage. Reggie Wayne, he just had such a burst of speed as he ran by him at the five-yard line. Yeah, and Dorsey on that drive, eight straight completions, and Reggie Wayne goes in for his sixth touchdown reception on the year. You see Butch Davis talking to Art Kehoe, the offensive line coach. There's not much you can say right now to Ken Dorsey, but good job and keep it going. Does he have the ball, though, in his possession completely as we look at it again? The foot is definitely down. Great concentration and great tightrope that time by Reggie Wayne. Looked like he had possession before he went over or outside of the end zone. And uh, this Miami offense clicking on all cylinders. And last week they did a great job defensively. They had three defensive scores this time tonight. 35 points before halftime. And we still got seven minutes and 28 seconds to go before halftime. Tennessee and UC USC were after Ken Dorsey. He decided to go to Miami. And I'm sure Canes fans are happy about that. The kickoff touched back in the end zone again. Having a good night kicking the ball tonight for Miami is Todd Seifers. Perfect five for five on points after. And he's gotten it into the end zone four times. Talk about magic numbers. When Miami scores 30, and they've done that 75 times most recently, <laughs> one every time. Yeah, I would say so. If you're going to score 30 plus, you better win every time. Chad Schwenk from the shotgun throwing and dropped one-handed that time. L.J. Smith, the tight end, couldn't come up with it, so Schwenk will have to face a second and ten. For the Scarlet Knights. Well, it didn't look like there was a lot of enthusiasm with L.J. Smith going across the middle, just one hand, knowing that Number 44, Dan Morgan, is there with Marquise Fitzgerald, and that has to upset Terry Shea. you got to play hard, even though you're out of a football game before halftime. Hand off inside. Short game that time. In on the tackle was Chris Campbell, the junior from Mount Pleasant, Texas. This Miami team which has shown the ability to score a lot of points. has been dynamic, really, on defense, too, and tonight they're pitching a shutout. Yeah, they've done a nice job defensively putting pressure on Chad Swank, really making him feel uncomfortable in that pocket. Third and 10 from the 20. Shotgun formation. Swank stepping up, throwing, and knocked out of the hands of the intended receiver. That time, L.J. Smith... And the coverage James by Lewis. James Lewis, who comes from right here in Piscataway, New Jersey, back home to torment his local university. Yeah, and Butch Davis on the Miami sideline, still wanting his players to stay sharp, trying to get him in and out of the football game. But this defense has done a nice job completely shutting down the passing attack for Rutgers. Santana Moss back at his 35-yard line to receive the punt of Mike Barr. Barr on a low snap, and here's the kick. Moss in the field at near midfield. He'll fair catch it at his own 49-yard line, and he's upset. He thought he had running room. 6.27 left in the half, 35-0 Miami. This is Big East football on ESPN+. Plus. Miami, a dedicated listener to John Congemi's broadcast in Florida, here tonight. 
dressed in Miami garb to watch the uh, Hurricanes. I bring Sebastian and my fans everywhere I travel, Mike. Dorsey somehow eludes the rush and throws just low to Santana Moss, showing great strength that time. The blitz, and he really somehow, I don't know how he stayed on his feet. Shaheeb White had him dead to rights. Yeah, you called it the strong safety. Shaheeb White in the Miami backfield. Ken Dorsey really just throws him down like a ragdoll. Take a look after the play action. Coming from the right side, actually it was first, it was Wes Robinson coming in, number three, the linebacker getting a back piece of Ken Dorsey, and he still had enough presence to get the football down the field to Santana Moss. Dorsey's from Orinda, California, just a sophomore. Here's the handoff, wow, what a hole. Davenport blows through the Scarlet Knights inside the 30-yard line for a gain of 21 yards. Well, you called it a gaping hole off the left side. Doing a nice job, this offensive line, really moving people out. Haji Rizzoli, number 74, in the game now at left tackle, doing a terrific job, along with Ed Wilkins, 72 at the left guard, and nice running room, nice cuts down the football field. You see Davenport, a big, strong back, 6'2", 235 pounds. He will carry tacklers towards that goal line. Davenport, who tore an ACL in the kickoff classic last year, carrying here and powering his way down near another first down. He had gotten off to a great start as a sophomore in that game against Ohio State, then tore the ACL. Now back, looks like he's fully recovered. Yeah, it was very disappointing last season. Nigel Davenport, really, they had a one-two punch not even counting on the freshman last year, Clinton Portis, to have such a great year, who is now hurt and stayed back in Miami. But Najee Davenport coming back off of that knee surgery, doing a terrific job, staying healthy and being productive. I formation, second and one from the 19. The handoff to Davenport has the first down and much, much more. They are just wearing down the Rutgers defense. Right now, a little bit of strength going on from that offensive line from Miami. Take a look, Rutgers wrist really catching blocks, and then you have a big bruising back behind it moving the pile. Miami doing a nice job controlling the line of scrimmage. Dorsey brings him up. Five minutes remaining in the half. Man in motion to the right, and he hands off to Davenport again, and Davenport taken down and Jeff Olson the defensive end a freshman at 6'6 240 was driven back about three yards yeah they're catching right now and you see the blowout right now first downs Miami 20 first downs total yards 403 yards they've already run close to 50 offensive plays you see Rutgers only running 22 plays only four first down first downs and 85 total yards that has to put a smile on Butch Davis's face I'd say more than a smile. He's got if a there's, big if grin. there's something more, yeah. please tell me. On the pitch, Davenport all alone out on the flat, breaks a tackle, and down inside the five, he just blasted down the defender and gained extra yardage. Dwayne Thompson, the sophomore, only 5'8", 185. Outmanned right there. A little bit of a mismatch out on space. You see there, Nigel Davenport must be an imposing figure coming at you. Dwayne Thompson saying, what do I do? I'll try to knock him down and go low, but that won't work. He's so strong, keeps the legs pumping. He bounces it outside and gets it inside the five to the four yard line. Terry Shea, unable to come up with a solution to Miami's potent offense. Davenport stays on his feet. This time they get him short of a first down Tony Berry the junior made the tackle and Davenport is either exhausted or something happened down there I think he's exhausted he hasn't had this much work since uh, probably two years ago that's the only way you can really stop Nijay if you can if you can stop his initial rushing straight ahead and make him turn his shoulders to the outside you see tonight having a terrific night he's averaging almost close to six yards per carry on seven, 77 yards rushing on 13 attempts Here's a field goal attempt coming from Todd Seavers. Down at the 12, they faked it, or it was misplayed and stopped. I don't think it was a fake, but it almost looked like a fake the way it developed. The holder had to carry it. Aaron Moser, we'll get another look at it, but 
<laughs> Butch Davis <laughs> is a little puzzled himself. Yeah, it doesn't look like what it was happened? a fake. It looked like a bobble just went right through. He went to place the football down and actually lost control. And now you ha always have a call when you're the holder, fire, fire, something to alert everybody to get out into a route. That time Aaron Mosier didn't have enough speed or a, enough awareness to really get a positive play out of it. Tries to score on the outside, but they'll turn the ball back over to Rutgers. Mosier didn't look like he was ready to throw it. He was <laughs> no. running for the first down. Did not get it, so Rutgers with a stop at their own six now. A fumble. fumble. It's in the end zone on the turf and picked up by Miami. Quincy Hips, the senior defensive end, and Miami foiled on the field goal, scores on a turnover. Well, if they're not going to score on offense, they're going to try to find a way to score on defense. Last week, we said against West Virginia, they had three defensive scores, two of those were interceptions one was a fumble recovery this time number 90 Quincy Hips gets on the football and looked like number 91 Matt Walters was the guy who sprang the football out of the offensive arms of Rutgers this score getting out of hand 41 to nothing but Miami putting pressure on Rutgers in all three phases of the football game now the extra point from Todd Seavers let's see how they handle this They're waiting to snap it and a long wait. And here's the penalty. Oh, they did not have 11 men on the field. It looked like Matt Walters got so excited that he sprung the football loose, he forgot to go in for an extra point. And uh, there's the little gesture. It's my fault. <laughs> That's right. I'm tired. Give me a break, guys. He's going up to Seaver saying, hey, can you make it from five yards deeper? <laughs> Right now, Seavers would probably like to uh, get another practice shot at it. He didn't get the kick the field goal prior. Bought at the same position from the 15. It's a 25-yard extra point, and he missed it. So the first miscue by the Hurricanes all night, 41-0. And they get one on the defensive side, something they did frequently last week. Yeah, they just break someone free right down the middle of the football field, right on the hash. Number 91, you see, getting into the offensive backfield, puts his headgear right on the football. Dennis Thomas cannot hold on to it. You see four and five white jerseys around the football. Quincy Hips is the one to get through, but take a look. Just textbook tackling right there. Arm, shoulder on one side, helmet on the, on the football. Terrific play by the Miami defense, an aggressive style defense Butch Davis has, along with Greg Schiano, the defensive coordinator. And you see the offensive defensive, the defense last two weeks, four defensive touchdowns, two for interceptions. He had one for a fumble recovery. Now you get another fumble recovery for a touchdown. Greg Schiano stressing the importance of that. You see him, he still wants to keep up the aggressive style on defense. Well, somewhere in Florida, Florida State will be looking at this Thursday night. They pounded Maryland themselves. Maybe both of these teams building up to that matchup next week are saying, we're going to show you what we're all about prior to that meeting, both laying some big numbers on their opponents. It's always an aggressive, tough, physical football game with a lot of talented athletes on both sides, and hopefully both teams will go into that game healthy, you know, with Florida State and Miami respectively. Chris Winkie hurt an ankle, uh, I believe, this, this past week, so hopefully he'll be healthy enough to play against Miami. Here's the kickoff. Rutgers fielding it at the goal line. And on the run back, another fumble into the hands of a Scarlet Knight. Dennis Thomas, on the return. Dennis Thomas lost it, and his teammate Steve Burson, the linebacker, came up with it. So a fortuitous bounce for the Scarlet Knights. Steve Burson, not that he wants to handle the ball, but it's an opportunity. <laughs> That's anyway. right. Thomas really, this ball was stripped, and probably the last person on that field right there to think he was going to run the football was number 57, Steve Burson. He does a good job just securing the ball and then getting taken down to the ground. Fundamental mistake, though, that time, John, as the carry by Dennis Thomas carried the ball to the inside, Gotta going get it to, to the, the right sideline. And that helped create the fumble. Pass complete. Short gain that time. L.J. Smith, the tight end from nearby Highland Park, New Jersey. 
As a little hurry up with 2.20 remaining in the first half. Miami up big, 41-0. They've kept the crowd out of it, certainly by scoring immediately two quick touchdowns in the first quarter, and have really poured it on in the second. Chad Schwenk in relief, Mike McMahon, who could not make the start tonight. And Schwenk is buried. The sack Swank of Chad Schwenk. Jamal Green. Jamal Green, a sophomore, went to Woodrow Wilson High here in Camden, New Jersey. Or down near Philly, rather. Jamal Green on the left side of your screen just uses the speed rush right on the uh, left side of your screen. Does a nice job on Julian Ross, the left tackle. Comes right upfield and just uses his sheer strength and speed to get to the quarterback, Chad Swank. Third and 12. Two wide receivers spread right. Swank's going up top. And he threw it a little too far. Swank got blasted after he let go of the ball. The pass intended for Errol Johnson. You're watching Big East football on Saturday night. The 12th ranked Hurricanes at Rutgers, Rutgers Stadium, Piscataway, New Jersey. I'm Mike Crispino with John Congemi. Rob Brooks on the sidelines with us tonight. And Miami making a huge statement, an impressive statement with their offensive outburst. So 112 remaining and back to punt it. For Rutgers, Freddie Capshaw. Here's the kick, Santana Moss, fair catch signal at about the 47 yard line. So a relatively short kick that time. Of 30 yards, some pressure coming at him. And Miami will start inside Rutgers territory. Yeah, high snap, and really that's what caused the, the kick and a lot of pressure on the left side. We talked about Butch Davis in his era for special teams. Miami has blocked 38 kicks, and in the 10 years prior to Butch Davis coming from 85 to 94, the Canes only got to the kick 23 times, so he's done a great job on special teams. Huge improvement in that category. On the rollout, Ken Dorsey has given way now to number 15. It looked like Ethnic Sands in the ball game, Mike. The young quarterback doing a nice job on the rollout. He's going to get some experience in this football game with 46 seconds left to go before halftime and, and counting down. He's a sophomore from Carroll City, Florida. And Butch Davis. Falling off the dogs here. Ken Dorsey goes in, or rather will sit down as the first half comes to an end. <laughs> Ethnic Sands hands off to the right. And a sweep and lots of running room and breaking it. Jason gathers outside, Jason down the inside the 10 the yard line. There is a flag down and we could have a holding call. But Jason Gathers, who is a wide receiver, just a freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. Nearly broke that one for a touchdown. Well, that's a sure indication that they want to keep the redshirt on Jared Payton, the third running back. They're going to put in Jason Gathers, the wide Holding receiver. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Who played a little running back at Boca Raton High School at Spanish River, but does a nice job on the right side. Take a look at the explosiveness. Once he gets through the hole, you see the holding there just to the right of your screen, but take a look at the speed and agility on the outside. Doing a terrific job going down, tight roping the sidelines, but it all come back. Steve Burson was held on the play. That's Ken Dorsey. Sophomores at a tremendous first half, taking a knee to end the first half. The Hurricanes head to the locker room. Rutgers has to do some major regrouping. They're down 41, nothing. James Jackson, a huge first half. The running back, two first quarter touchdowns. 
Reggie Wayne, an outstanding catch of a touchdown. And Miami fans have come a long way for this one. You can start reading the media guides. Yeah, you're right. And the what programs can you say? at halftime. What can you say about this Miami team that hasn't gone right for him? James Jackson, the combination of him and Nijay Davenport at the running back spot, and every person that Ken Dorsey looked to on the outside. Santana Moss made some big plays. Reggie Wayne with a big touchdown catch. Andre King on the fade route. Daryl Jones doing a nice job. So all those guys have done a terrific job, and you can't mention them without mentioning the offensive line. Thought they dominated the game from the start. A lot of running room for the Miami Hurricane running backs. That started them off on the right check, and the defense has been very stifling. Well, they pitched a shutout in the first half. The band is out to entertain the Scarlet Knights fans and maybe take their minds off what they've seen here in the first half. We shall return. First half festivities, halftime festivities coming up. Miami 41-0. This is Big East football from ESPN+. Plus. Well, the Rutgers is just 13 yards on the ground, Miami, 74 total. Miami's done a terrific job in all three phases. You see there, 400 total yards. We're only at halftime. Miami probably using the bench in the second half. We shall return the second half coming up from the birthplace of college football, tonight being dominated by Miami. 41 nothing at halftime. Speak there. Oh, yeah. We're going to play hard for 60 minutes. <laughs> of course they're going to do that. But he will get an opportunity to let some players to get some playing time here in the second half. And, uh, you know, it's always interesting when a, a coach has an opportunity. It's kind of unusual when you do get an opportunity like that, that uh, at least you have something on film to look at of some players that you don't see in game conditions. Well, it's good for the players, too, to react and see how they play in a game situation. It's one thing to come out and practice really well, but when the lights go on and you're playing in a game time situation, sometimes, especially for a quarterback like Ethnic Sands coming in, probably will start the third quarter, it's a lot easier for a quarterback because everything moves a lot clearer when you're playing well and you're up and the offensive line is doing their job. You can be very proficient at what you're doing. And I think Ethnic Sands and the rest of those guys that don't get a, a chance, an opportunity to start, will play well in the second half. Miami came into the season with 14 returning starters, 11 of which were all Big East first and second teamers. That's a good, solid foundation. And they've added some youth that uh, has enabled them you know, to improve already early in the year. They've got a schedule ahead of them, though. Includes Florida State. Then they go to Philadelphia to play Temple, Louisiana Tech, and then Virginia Tech at home on noon, the 4th of November. Pittsburgh, very improved, unbeaten so far. Syracuse on the road, so they've got a ways to go yet. Here's the kickoff. Taken in the end zone, and it won't be run back. Handling it was Dennis Thomas. And having a good night on the kickoffs tonight has been Todd Seavers. That is the fifth one he's kicked into the end zone that has not been returned. Yeah, Todd Seavers doing an excellent job. And you would think Miami, with all the talent in the state of Florida at the skill position, would be able to find some kickers and punters from the state of Florida. Well, Todd Seavers, he comes all the way from Iowa. Freddie Capshaw, the punter, he's from Wyoming. So a lot of guys in the Midwest all the way out to the West Coast doing the kicking for the University of Miami. Chad Schwank back under center in the second half, 8 of 18, 61 yards. Those numbers similar to what happened to him last year when Miami routed Rutgers down in Florida. Tough situation for him to come into, though. He had seen limited playing time. Mike McMahon out with a sore shoulder, unable to go. So Miami will start at their 10-yard line on a penalty call on that kickoff. Here's the handoff and going nowhere. Taken down hard. Number 27 was in on it for Miami. Marquise Fitzgerald took down Jason Oheen. Well, the Knights, 13 freshmen, 12 true freshmen, have seen action this season. So there's a, a future out there for them that is going to be brighter. If they improve, of course. And if they keep playing hard, Miami has that same opportunity, but Rutgers has to start with those true freshmen. Sometimes that's a mismatch. Chad Schwank back, blitzed down. White shirts surrounding him. They were just outnumbered. 
receivers got open. L.J. Smith, but just no way as Al Blades and others just came hard. This has got to be a helpless feeling after the play fake when Chad Schwenk turns around and sees nothing but white jerseys. He looks like he's running the 40-yard dash the wrong way because everybody's coming. Miami had nine players up on the line of scrimmage, and as we said last season, Chad Swank had nine sacks against them, threw for only 51 yards, shades of last season reappearing this season. He's been sacked twice tonight. Now he's in the shadow of his own goalpost. And back to throw. Quick pass, and unable to come down with it. Good defensive play made by Edward Reed, the junior defensive back from Louisiana. Broke it up, and it'll be fourth down for Rutgers. So yeah. three and out for yeah, Edward the Scarlet Knights. Reed doing a nice job coming from that strong safety position, really taking down a bigger man at 6'4", 225 pounds in L.J. Smith, but really nowhere to throw the football for Chad Swank. So with short yardage to kick it out from Mike Barr in his end zone and booting Santana Moss or not Santana Moss this time around Daryl Jones on the punt return breaks a couple tackles reverses field eludes another he's at the 30 and fumbles it out of bounds inside the Rutgers 30 yard line so Daryl Jones on the return, good for 20 yards inside the Rutgers 30, and that's where Miami will begin their first position possession of the second half. Well, it might not have been Santana Moss, but it sure did look like Santana Moss after he went one side of the football field, cuts across all the way back to the other side, and you'll see Sa uh, Sands, the quarterback, the Canes. Miami will have it when we return. This is Big East football from ESPN+. Plus. You can Jimmy, Rob Brooks here in Rutgers where the Miami Hurricanes are rolling. 41-0 just underway in the second half. They'll start at the 28-yard line after the good return by Daryl Jones. And the handoff, the short gain that time by Jason Gethers, wide receiver is going to see a little action in the backfield in the second half. Yeah, he knows what to do when he gets the football, but take a look at this punt last play. Daryl Jones goes out of bounds, but wait, who's in on the tackle? It looks like Terry Shea gets in an elbow, almost got, got taken out, clipped on the sidelines, but that's a tough spot to be. Terry Shea already down 41 points. I imagine he would love to let out a little a la Woody Hayes frustration on the sidelines. You see in his fifth season, 10 and 38, one in ten last season things aren't going well right now great uh, coaching job at san jose state before he got here the rollout the pass is dropped that time one of the few mistakes made by miami tonight andre johnson who's a freshman from miami florida good coverage by brandon hall that time the contact made and the drop yeah, the only thing Andre Johnson didn't do was catch the football. He did a nice job coming around the coverage on the curls route, sat in the middle of the zone. Ethnic Sands delivered the football to him. All he has to do is catch the football. Ethnic Sands is a sophomore, six feet, 180 pounds, getting some valuable playing time tonight. Now faced with a third and seven from the 26. And a whistle blows. Prior to the snap, it's a timeout, Miami. Butch Davis and company, 41-0. This is Big East football from ESPN+. Plus. The Miami Hurricanes on the go tonight. 41-0 at halftime, and we're just underway. Butch Davis is not going to stop coaching, even though the lead has ballooned to this. Explaining to his running back. Something particular. Ethnic Sands has come in to relieve Ken Dorsey at quarterback, and Sands mishandles the snap. And that will set Miami up with a fourth down and eight. And they're going to try a field goal here from 45 yards away. Well, sometimes when you're on the sidelines for that long a period of time, coming out at halftime, center quarterback exchange, something you take for granted, sometimes just doesn't happen. 
I don't think Butch Davis explained that was the play to go. Big booming kick, and it's just wide left. Todd Seavers had plenty of leg from 45 yards away, but it drifted left, and the score remains 41-0. Butch Davis trying to still coach his football team. He wants them to play hard for the last 30 minutes. He's telling Todd, I know you had a big leg there. Let's get it inside the post, put another three points on the scoreboard. But Butch Davis does that. He just doesn't do that in blowouts. He's constantly coaching and talking to his players. He has a great rapport with his coaching staff and his football team. Here's another look at it. Just started left the entire way, Mike, and a big booming kick, but they're actually a good night to kick the football. No win. Todd Seavers just missing it wide left. Great night for football as well. Temperatures around 60 when we began, now drifting down into the low 50s. Which Davis, sixth season at Miami. Short gain on the first down carry. By Rutgers, as they've made some changes here in the second half as well. That time, the carry made by Jason Oheen, who wears number 28. Oheen's from Farmingdale, New York, a junior running back. Single setback behind Chad Swank, second and nine. Fakes the handoff, throws, caught, and good for a first down. Walter King, the outstanding receiver, the senior. Nice catch on the outside by Walter King. This ball's out in front of him, and Philip Buchanan had his feet squarely planted, ready to deliver the blow. He still gives a stinging blow to Walter King, but King coming down with the football. Good throw by Chad Swank on the inside route. King the best ever in yards per catch in Rutgers history. That pass is knocked down and you know, Cornelius Green's upset. He said, I should have picked that off and gone back with it. You're right. Hit him right in the hands, but a nice job. Good, good job of getting off the block. Cornelius Green, he's 6'4", 250, gets up in the air. That's not the first pass he's batted down this evening. There is a penalty marker. Hurricanes were offside. Certainly an area I'm sure that Butch Davis will be watching closely in the second half. Want the team to play fundamentally sound, no matter what the scoreboard says. I think they were lining up in the neutral zone a little bit, and that's what Butch wanted to uh, relay the message out to the field. Schwenk in the shotgun, first and five for the Knights. Handoff draw. Breaking a tackle, good for a first down. Gain of seven by Jason Oheen. So Rutgers moves it into Miami territory here to open the third quarter. Yeah, shades of life from this Rutgers offense there. You see Jason Oheen coming out of the game. Nice athletic play by Schwenk, the snap very high, but nice job up front by the Rutgers offensive line. Jeremy Womack, the center, did a good job turning the protection to the right. Oheen picking a hole up the middle, good for a first down. Jerome McDougal came from his defensive end position to make the play. Impressive the way Miami chases people down after they break the line of scrimmage. Their defensive linemen are very quick. And here, a tackle for a two-yard loss in the backfield by William Joseph, a big six-foot-five-inch, 290-pound sophomore from Miami, Florida. Yeah, they bring William Joseph. They moved him, started the season at defensive end, bring him down to the defensive tackle spot. Came into the game with four tackles for a loss for minus 15. Make that five. William Joseph playing very, very well on the inside. The 4-3 setup. Now five defensive backs in for Miami. Schwenk looking, throwing, has a man. It's Walter King again. Another flag goes down in the offensive backfield. We'll see what the preliminary ball is and it will go against Rutgers yeah that'll negate a big play by Walter King on the outside Terry Shea not pleased with the call looked like one of the offensive linemen possibly chopped a defensive lineman for Miami let's see what the call is 
Two years ago, this Rutgers team was five and six. Terry Shea was the Big East coach of the year. Last year, injury riddled, one and 10 season. Shea was hoping to return this team to the 500 level or above. Comes in at two and two. On the offense, 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And a big chunk of yardage walked off against Rutgers. Jeremy Womack called for the infraction. Yeah, we got a chop block to the left side. You see right there, number 30, Dennis Thompson goes down. I don't know if that's considered a chop block. It must have happened on the outside, but he went down right about the knees, did the fullback Dennis Thomas. That can't be a penalty on Dennis Thomas. That, that looked like a good block. We didn't hear the uh, number called. At any rate, a 15-yard penalty. Throwing up top. Blake just overthrew his man, and he had L.J. Smith, his tight end, open. 35, 40 yards downfield. Yeah, Chad Swank did a nice job looking off of the tight end. L.J. Smith going down the middle. He had L. Blades on the hash, kept him there, and then went downtown to his middle line, uh, to his tight end, but overthrew him. Watches Chad's head to the outside, takes a look, and then goes back to his tight end. Just overshoots the big 6-4 tight end, streaking down the middle of the field. He knows he had him, Mike, and he had it. You only get one or two opportunities a game to hit that big play. Hopefully, for Chad's sake, he'll have another opportunity. It's third and 30 from the 34. Three-man rush for Miami. Pass thrown behind Pass Walter King ball. and incomplete. And that will do it for Rutgers. They will face a fourth and 30. And Miami will send a different punt returner back as they shift some personnel around. Philip Buchanan back to receive this punt. It's Terry Shea explaining to his quarterback, Chad Swank, what he was looking for. The seventh punt of the night for Rutgers. Mike Barr gets it off. It's a high spiraling kick taken on a fair catch at the 25 and now running with it. Well, he fooled himself if that's possible. <laughs> it's one or the other. You can't do both, Philip. If you're going to call a fair catch, you can't run the football. That'll cost you some yardage. It's a nifty move, but you can't do it. <laughs> Butch Davis is asking him, listen, but wait a minute. If you're going to do that, you got to stick one up in the air. I think he halfway wanted a fair catch this one. There's the quick fair catch. He felt some footsteps. He said, you know what? They weren't as close as they looked. Let me try to run this thing. He could have been waving a gnat away. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm thinking. I think Look. he was saying hi, Mom, and he's decided to take <laughs> off. <laughs> it's possible. Philip Buchanan, Mom probably watching tonight from Fort Myers, Florida. All right, so they'll start the Hurricanes with Ethnic Sands, the quarterback at their 20-yard line following the penalty. Sands with the fake rollout wide open as a man and big gain down the sidelines goes Robert Williams and out of bounds inside Rutgers territory. Beautifully executed naked bootleg by Ethnic Sands. Yeah, he goes 40 yards does Robert Williams down the Rutgers sideline. Nice bootleg, nice fake, draws the defense to his left. Now you just got an easy flip pass to your fullback. Let him do all the work. He's a big man going down there. Nice block on the outside by the Miami wide receivers. They do a good job downfield, but this is just pitch and catch, just like a long handoff, and just leave it to number 80. Robert Williams goes down the sidelines for the Canes 40 yards. Some poor tackling that time by the Scarlet Knights. Enabled Williams to rip off a 40-yard gain. And Miami in Rutgers territory again. It seems like they've been there most of the night. It hasn't really been a field position game. I mean, Miami has moved the ball almost every time. Well, he sat down after a very productive first half. Ken Dorsey, the sophomore quarterback. Yeah. 14 for 19 for 215. Great efficient night for Ken Dorsey. Came out, did what he needed to do. Got in the end zone three times via the air. The handoff. Jason Gathers stays on his feet, knocked out of bounds. Jason Gathers around the 35-yard line. Oh, and Kenny Kelly decided he was going to play baseball. 
you know, it might have worked out for Miami. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I don't know, even if he came back, he would have started for the University of Miami. Ken Dorsey finished off the season with three big victories, played very well against Georgia Tech in the bowl game, and I tell you what, it would have been a tough competition, a tough battle for that starting quarterback job, even if he did come back. Dorsey's arm, you know, quarterbacks are, they're so, you know, <laughs> they're so enamored with their right arms. That's I right, mean, you have to be, that's right. your bloodline. He threw three touchdowns. <laughs> uh, you know, I could see you doing something like that. Oh, a sack, the big rush, taken down. Bill Hambrick, the freshman linebacker on the blitz, and a big loss. Ethnic Sands could not elude that. Yeah, number 45, Bill Hambrick did a nice job getting number 15 squarely in his sight. And Terrence Hagee, number six, also at the linebacker spot in the Miami backfield. They have sacked a number of quarterbacks this year. 19 coming in, they've added two. Miami's punt, a high spiraling kick inside the 10 and stopped on the one yard line by Philip Buchanan. So Buchanan, with a great play off of Freddie Capshaw punt. We'll be back. This is Big East Football from ESPN Plus. Scataway, New Jersey, home of Rutgers University. They're down 41 0 to Miami. And they have the ball on their own one yard line. Trying to get some running room. Rutgers out to the four yard line. Great kick that time by. Freddie Capshaw and wonderful work by Philip Buchanan. Yeah, nice hustle by Philip Buchanan, and it takes a terrific bounce for Miami. It seems like everything's gone their way offensively, defensively, and now special teams. Great kick by Freddie Capshaw. Capshaw's a sophomore. So some quality young people on the Hurricanes team. All right, Schwenk has some room to work in his end zone. Steps back, throws the out pattern. Walter King has it. King, not much more than the catch. He's down at the five-yard line. It'll bring up a third down. Rob Brooks is down on the sideline with Garrett Shea. Rob? Guys, I'm down here on the sideline with the best defensive back that the Scarlet's Knight had. They unfortunately had to sit out this season, had to sit out last season, but there is hope on the horizon. Definitely. You know, uh, I'm always trying to get myself stronger, trying to come back. Uh, you know, I'd love to come back this season. It's just a matter of whether or not I can get healthy enough to. You told me earlier that uh, before the season started, you had a little feeling when you did something with your neck, you had a feeling in your arm, but you say all oh, that's gone now. Yeah, pretty much. You know, uh, it, it's gone whereas under my control, I, I can't recreate the symptoms of, uh, of my, uh, the numbness in my arm, but the, I, I haven't gotten that tested yet, and I'm hoping to get that tested in the next uh, week or so and, and see if I can um, make, make a comeback. While you've been sitting, though, you haven't been idle. You've been coaching some high school football. Tell us about that. Oh, it's been a great experience for me. I have a bunch of great kids down at Maculata High School. I'll uh, say hello to them right now. Uh, you know, they're fantastic kids. They, they, you know, they, I found that as being a coach, I've learned so much more than I ever knew as a player. So it's actually made me a better player uh, coaching, coaching those uh, high school kids. So. Tell me what it's been like. I mean, you have a special honor to play for your father. What's that like? You know, it's, it's one of the, the greatest things that I've been able to accomplish in my life is uh, playing college football for my dad. I watched him growing up, and I would always said, you know, I want to be out there. I want to be playing for my you know, especially especially on, on the days that we lose, you know, I I, I always felt like I, I'd want to be out there help, helping him. Uh, I always felt I could help him win, and you know, that's that's what I'm trying to do this year is uh, come back and help him win. Well, Garrett Shea, thanks a lot. Thanks for taking some time out for us. Guys, Garrett Shea, hopefully we'll get to see him out there in uniform one day this season. All right, thanks very much, Rob. Garrett wears number eight as a member of the Scarlet Knights. Struggled with neck problems. That pass by Chad Schwenk just out of the reach of the intended receiver, Josh Hobbs, and it will be fourth and five. Yeah, Rutgers offense pinned deep in their own end. Couldn't get the first down they were looking for. They're going to have to turn the football back over to that potent Miami offense. And a great opportunity for Daryl Jones has had one superb run back of a punt Mike earlier Barr. in this half. See what Mike Barr does with this. He's got a couple of less yards than normal for the long snap. Miami will not rush it hard. 
High kick spiraling into Miami territory. Jones at the 45 has room. Breaks it up past the 30, still on his feet, inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Another marker goes down, but an excellent return of 28 yards from Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones catching it on the run. That's what you have to do to be an effective punt returner. It looks like they'll get some yardage tacked onto it with the face mask call. So Miami coming out very aggressive on special teams. Face mask. On the kicking team, five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Never want to let that football hit the ground as, as a punt returner. Take a look at Daryl Jones. He's got it in high gear from the get-go. Does a nice job, and right here, you should get the face mask right there by the Rutgers special teams, and that'll tack on another 15. So from inside the 20, Miami will start. And the handoff goes Robert to Williams Robert carry. Williams, a tight end, getting a chance to carry it. And he picks up six yards. Yeah, with number four, Nijay Davenport starting at the fullback spot. It looked like Robert Williams was backing him up. Now he gets an opportunity to run the football from the fullback spot. Miami's offensive line still dominating out front. You see Puckett 63 and number big number 72, Ed Wilkins. Miami took a lot of the suspense out of this game in the second quarter when they scored 28 points, two touchdowns within a minute 35, and then that was at the beginning of the quarter, and then two more in the final seven and a half minutes, four and a half minutes apart. So Butch Davis's team has scored them in clusters tonight, and they lead it 41-0. Yeah, and they're knocking at the door again with 521 left to go in the third quarter. Ethnic Sands at the control for Miami. This Rutgers University team returned nine starters this year, and we're hoping to bounce back from that one and 10 season. They started with two wins, and then two losses. Most recently, Virginia Tech routed them on the road, and then Pittsburgh won by 12 at Pitt last week, and that was a game Rutgers probably could have won. They turned Pittsburgh over seven times. Just played poorly in the first half. They really did a nice job coming back in the second half, but and Pitt now starting 4-0, off to a, a, a big start. But you're right, Rutgers had an opportunity, as you see the official taking, uh, talking to to Ethnic Sands. This is a guy that started the season last year as a wide receiver and a kick returner, and now he goes back to his natural position of quarterback where he led uh, his high school to two state championship games, two state championship wins. Sands under the center at second and three. He fumbles the pitch, and Rutgers has come up with it. Tony Berry on the fumble recovery, and something finally goes right for the Scarlet Knights. Something for this crowd, this first crowd to cheer about. Number two, you see Tony Berry jumping on the football. Another center quarterback exchange problem for Ethnic Sands. Maybe came out of there a little early on the toss sweep. The center's going one way, and you're trying to get out the other way. Brett Romberg getting out of there. It might have been Scott Puckett. The backup center in there as well, but a fight, a scramble for the football, and you see number two, Tony Berry, getting his first fumble recovery of the year 2000. That one just looked like it was mishandled by Sands. I don't think the exchange was sloppy. Yeah, it looked like the Scott Puck at the center was out in front trying to get that cutoff block. Sometimes when the center's getting out of there a little quick, you have to stay in there a little longer as a quarterback. So Rutgers has the ball after the turnover. Schwenk going up top, intercepted. Down the right sideline, still on his feet, touchdown! Mike Rump took it all the way back off the interception. Miami, 47-0. Mike Rump, it looked like just playing center field out there at the cornerback position. The ball was going into a crowd. Number eight taking a look at his eyes on it the whole way. Gets his first interception of the season. He goes 44 yards into the end zone for another hurricane touchdown. The Canes came in sixth in the country in interceptions. They've added a couple tonight. This one a 44-yard return for a touchdown. And the conversion is good. 48-0 Miami. Mike Rump, a junior from Delray Beach. Went to Atlantic High School there. Here's a look. Yeah, just really up for grabs down the left sideline. A big crowd 
two Rutgers receivers running downfield, but no one really in position to catch the football. The only guy looking at the ball was number eight, Mike Rump. He does a nice leap around the 10 yard line and gets into the end zone untouched for the Hurricane touchdown. Last week, they had two interceptions returned against West Virginia. You see the ball poorly underthrown to the outside. He has an escort. Villa number 51 provides a great block, and then Mike Rump strides and dives for the end zone. Another defensive score for this Hurricane team. They can beat you with offense, they can beat you on special teams, but this defense knows how to get into the end zone. So another night of big points for Miami. They had 61 against McNeese State to open the year, 29 at Washington, losing 34-29, and then 47 at Morgantown, Nearly a record-breaking performance at Morgantown, a place that's very difficult to win. But last week, that was the second worst loss by a West Virginia team at the new field in Morgantown. Yeah, very tough place to play, but Miami scored early, and they really shut down West Virginia by scoring on defense. They dominated with defense. Tonight they came out offensively, did a great job, but now this defense knows how to shorten the field. Sometimes they take the hand, take it right into their hands and score themselves. We mentioned Rutgers being the best team in the conference as far as turnovers, turnover ratio. Miami's second, 1.67. So they've had a good start in that category, and that usually means you're going to win some football you're games. You're going to get some Ws. That's true. That's right, Mike. And so the crowd uh, of 24,000 announced earlier starting to thin out here in the third. The kickoff taken at the goal line and returned up past the 20 yard line. A return of 21 yards by Walter King or the wide receiver Vaughn Calhoun on that return. You're watching Big East football, Miami and Rutgers from Rutgers Stadium, Piscataway. From ESPN Plus, Mike Crispino along with John Kajemi and Rob Brooks with us on the sidelines tonight as Rutgers Scarlet Knights try to get something going in the final 446 of the third. Chad Swank, pressed into duty with Mike McMahon's shoulder injury, has thrown two interceptions. Yet to produce any points. High snap. Swank comes up with it. He's running around in circles, and he is buried. They've had some troubles tonight on some high snaps, and that, uh, as a quarterback, you don't need that added anxiety, do you? It's tough enough playing against a tough defense, but Jeremy Womack, as you said, the center, has been throwing the football back to his quarterback, Chad Swank, very high on the shotgun snaps. Schwenk did a nice job of just tipping the football to himself to regain possession, but that has to come back to the center. You got to make it easy on me. Get in that huddle and say, hey, pal, Jeremy, put it down a little lower in my numbers. You're my friend, remember? I'm on your team. <laughs> Don't get me buried. All right, so they'll go under center this time on second and 15. Hand off. The cut back. Oh, what a hit. What a hit that time by LaVar Scott, sophomore Jones. linebacker from Sebring, Florida. He just blasted Rayvon Anderson, the tailback, short game. Mike, I think I got a loose feeling in my mouth just from that hit all the way up here. Let's listen to this hit. Oh, baby, how you doing? He kissed him right on the lips. Good thing they wear helmets in this game. Ouch. 324 and Running here in the third quarter as Rutgers faces third and long again. Two wide receivers right and uh, the play clock's going to run out before they get it off. What else can happen to Terry Shea's Scarlet Knights tonight? Interception return. Touchdown passes, touchdown runs. A screen pass earlier. It was one of the prettiest plays of the night to James Jackson. Penalty yard, 60 offensive yards, 75, and another missed snap. And that one is kicked out of the end zone. That is going to be a safety for Miami. Mike, I was going to stop you when you said what else could possibly go wrong. Well, there's evidence right there. Another bad snap from Jeremy Womack. And that time, Chad Swank trying to jump on the football, accidentally kicks it into the back of the end zone, and 
Greg Schiano and this defensive staff has to be happy, and that's one guy that is not happy right now. Let's take another look, another snap. That ball should have been handled by Chad Swank. Actually, he didn't kick it. He threw it out of the end zone. It looked like his foot got on it, but that was just a pass outside of the end zone. Probably a heads-up play. Didn't want to give up the touchdown and gives up the safety anyway. It's 50 to nothing. And Terry Shea has to figure out what to do in upcoming weeks because they've been outclassed by Virginia Tech and now Miami. Temple's next. They've got a week off. Temple on the 14th. But we just saw Temple Thursday night, and they are not an easy mark any longer. No, they played very well. We, we talked about this at the Open. You know, Terry Shea looking at the schedule probably thought he didn't have a real good chance to beat Miami, but now you've got to win four out of the last six to possibly get a winning record. You take a look, Temple vastly improved. He's got a shot at Navy. Boston College has a shot there, but West Virginia's played well as of late. Notre Dame has played well, and Syracuse putting a pasting on BYU today, so it's going to be a tough road to hoe for Terry Shea. Syracuse up 21-0 in the second at home tonight against BYU. After the safety, here's the kick, and it's taken by Philip Buchanan, who returns it back to the 38-yard line. Yeah, it looked like the snap was to his back left, Chad ball, Swank's right. left, but then he just pitches the football out of the back of the end zone. I, he would have taken a safety anyway if he just falls on the ball. He almost gave a shot for Miami to score six instead of two. I'm not sure that was a great decision to pitch it like that. What if someone deflects it, it turns into seven or six instead of two? Yeah, he looked like he was already in the end zone as a result. Would have been a safety anyway. New quarterback in for Miami. It's Troy Prasick. He's Robert a sophomore from Mims, Florida, where's number 19. He'll get some snaps here in the late Brandon third quarter Ball. going. Correction, Nate Colon and Gary Brackett on the stop. Rutgers coming in at two and two, looking for their first conference win. But being hammered right now. Here's the pitch back, it's Jason Gethers. He's run the ball pretty well tonight. That's a gain of about six Jason for Gethers. Gethers he's a wide receiver, freshman turned running back for the night. Yeah, he's done a nice job. He really has a lot of burst to the outside. He hits the hole with authority. That's what you like to see. In the open field, he can really make you pay. He can beat you with one touch of the football, but he's a, he's a nice talent, and you like to see him getting in some game experience as a freshman coming out of Spanish River High School in Boca Raton. Did run the football a lot at, as a high school senior. Prasek came on as a walk-on and moved up in the depth chart at Miami, number three last year. Now the rollout, and he uh, keeps it. Not much of a gain there, and that'll bring up third and two. Prasek tackled by Tony Or fourth and two. And Bill Hambrick. From 46-yard line of Miami. 44 as they mark it. So back to receive the punt now for Rutgers is Delrico Fletcher, the junior wide receiver. Freddie Capshaw to punt for Miami. Freddie Capshaw gets another attempt. And <laughs> Everybody's going. You can't go unless I snap the football. I was going to say, what else can we see tonight? Chris Harvey fooled everybody. Said I wasn't ready. I'll decide when I want to snap the Here, ball. Here's what I'm thinking. He's saying, what did you say the snap count was? <laughs> it was an illegal snap by the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. There he goes right there, Mike. <laughs> what did you say that? That was on one, And right? the other ten are saying, we all heard it. Why didn't you? You guys got to pay attention. I thought you said two. <laughs> Chris Harvey gets another chance. Capshaw, oh, they almost got it. Capshaw went down. They didn't throw a flag. Punt is fielded and quickly Del taken Fletcher down. Field, huh? Del Rico Fletcher. Nice coverage job by Philip Buchanan. Yeah, Philip Buchanan and Daryl Jones sprinting down, and really Rutgers special teams almost gets there. You see number 85 for Rutgers getting in there. L.J. Smith, the tight end, trying to get to the kick of Freddie Capshaw. He sent off a great kick and great coverage, as you said, by Buchanan and number one, Daryl Jones. 
I thought that might have been a penalty. Even though he was blocked into the punter, he still ran into him. Right, and he didn't get a piece of it either. Well, maybe he did get a finger. We couldn't quite tell. That must have been what the officials saw. Chad Schwenk, the sophomore, been a long night for him. Three receivers wide right, and now another flag goes down. Yeah, I think they broke the huddle with 12. Jason O'Hane. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That was an illegal formation. Now Syracuse has opened up a huge lead over BYU, 42 to seven. Wow, I didn't think Syracuse could put that many points on the scoreboard. LSU, they led 24-3. It's now 24-15 in the third. Volunteers are in some trouble. We'll get back to more college scores after we see what Rutgers does on first and 15. Running right, sweeping right, moving up and making the tackle. There's that man, Philip Buchanan again. Knocks down Rayvon Anderson for a loss of about a yard. Out west, USC in trouble. Oregon State leading 24-14. Trojans could lose. Nebraska, 35-24 in the fourth over the Tigers of Missouri. Well, Terry Shea's got to look ahead at what he can find positive out of this game in the final quarter and then start preparing for Temple. Pass completed and a gain of about seven by Rutgers. They've got a third and ten facing them. And that'll end the third quarter. 50 to nothing, Miami. This is Big East football from ESPN+. Plus. To Rutgers, Miami, after three quarters with a 50 to nothing lead. The benches have been emptied as we go to the final 15 minutes. Chad Swank's gone all the way for Rutgers with Mike McMahon injured tonight. Rutgers did not need injury problems facing the Hurricanes. The connection made and a fumble at the end of the play. Down by contact, we believe. On third and 10, coming up just about a yard short that time. Pass was complete to Errol Johnson, who fumbled. And There's Errol Johnson. There's a flag on the play. It was just short of it. There's a marker down. Rutgers has won some big games under Terry Shea. This one against Syracuse. Last November in overtime, the field goal was the difference. The Scarlet Knights knocking off Syracuse here. They haven't beaten a ranked opponent, though, since 1988 at Penn State in September of that year. Penn State was ranked 17th in the country when the Knights beat them. And you've got to wonder, how long will it be before Rutgers can produce a program that will compete and win games and win more than they lose? Well, you're right, and it's a tough situation for a coach to be in. You almost feel helpless tonight. You're going out, and you think you got a good game plan offensively defensively then you run into a buzzsaw in Miami who's really been on a roll the last couple of weeks they rebounded from the Washington win so a tough situation to get your players up to play a team like Miami Schwenk's quick throw and deflected penalty went down Schwenk got hit after he threw it and I think they're going to penalize Gerald Weaver for a late hit well it's going to be two late hits in a row and the play before Aaron Mosier Number 26, the defensive back gets called for a late hit. There you've got two steps and a hit from Ger Gerald Weaver at the linebacker position. That'll go against Miami, too. So that's something Butch Davis and Greg Schiano on the sidelines saying, hey, play tough, but play smart as well. Well, it's difficult to maintain concentration sometimes when a game gets out of hand on either side. Now, Rutgers has had that problem tonight, and now here we see Miami with the same problem. And you get young players in a football game, they want to make plays. They want to get into this, get themselves on film, show the coaches that, hey, I can play this position just as well as maybe the starter. First and 10 from the 42 for Rutgers. Three wide receivers right. Nobody in the backfield with Chad Swank. Quick throw on the outside. The catch breaks a tackle. Breaks another tackle, and a gain of about six for Errol Johnson. Nice job of running after the catch by Errol Johnson, a senior from Palo Alto. It was a nice audible that time by Chad Swank. He audibled at the line of scrimmage. You could take, you could see Johnson take a couple steps back to get in position to get 
to, so it's a forward pass, takes it upfield, and it's a first down, or close to a first down, short by three yards. Now four wide receivers, two to each side, and a single back behind Schwank here. And the handoff to that back, breaking through the line, but slowing down the runner, Carlos Joseph, big number 76, just ended that play before it really got started. By Carlos Jason Oheen brought down. You said big, and you're right. Carlos Joseph, 6'6", 305 pounds. He's a freshman. He's trying to get off the block of 55. Rich Massa, he does a good job of getting around and getting to the ball carrier, but not until Oheen gets the first down. There he is, Carlos Joseph. He's just a freshman. He's a baby. So I'm thinking he's about 18, weighs 305. And that's generous. <laughs> Another high snap. Swank has time, though. Oh, he threw it right into the numbers of Gerald Weaver. With the gloves and everything, Weaver can't make the interception. Yeah, it's a cold right. night that time, and he was up in the right spot. And as you said, the quarterback's working too hard to start every play in shotgun. He's jumping around just making sure he can catch the snap, but a lot of white jerseys, even if it doesn't hit Gerald Weaver that time, and he's upset he didn't come down with the catch. That might have been going the other way. Second and 10, and that's the tip drill that they use all the time in practice, so practice didn't make perfect that time. Schwenk with the catch and a good hard tackle. Made by Miami, Marquise Fitzgerald. Miami has been tackling well tonight. And that's a tough play made by Chad Swank. You know you've got one free defensive player coming, breathing down your neck, and you've got to get rid of the football. And that was a good catch and throw by the quarterback, Chad Swank. Did you see who was helping I out? I saw the big Carlos man. Carlos Joseph. The baby. Eight yards behind in the backfield, making the supporting tackle. Swank, good throw. The catch. And down inside the 10 yard line, Errol Johnson. Tackled by Aaron Moser. That time the quarterback, Chad Swank, had plenty of time to set his feet, step into the throw. First, he gets a good snap from his center. He's just waiting on the curl route, and he throws a dart inside. And the good thing that Earl Johnson does, he doesn't go east and west. He gets the football and goes towards the goal line. Do you like the way that Chad Schwank throws it when he has time? When he's he has time, arm. when he gets a good snap from center, he can keep his eyes down the football field. He doesn't have to worry about catching and then throwing. Well, he's the quarterback of the future. Mike McMahon's a senior after this year. That one just off the outstretched hands of Josh Hobbs. Marker down. That time Schwank had his man, threw a little off balance and threw it a little high just led him a little bit too far right about at the goal line but he had the right idea on the throw and the indication is it'll go against Rutgers they're walking back there's Greg Schiano the defensive coordinator for Miami trying to keep that snowman on the board underneath Rutgers, Rutgers trying to keep him out of the end zone five yard penalty defeat first down came to Miami from the Chicago Bears where he was the Defensive backfield coach at Penn State for a while as well, Mike. And a grad assistant back in 89 right here at Rutgers. Came out of Ramapo High School, New Jersey, where he was an assistant coach back in the late 80s. So first and 11, blitz coming, stepping up, touchdown Rutgers! Jason O'Hean from Chad Shank. Swank found him, delivered it, and Rutgers is finally on the board. Chad Swank, very happy. He's been taking a beating tonight, but he did a good job. And you see the Miami coaching, coaching staff on the sidelines trying to figure out what went wrong, but really can't stop a good throw and a good catch. They bring the heat, but Jason Oheen beats him to the punch and a nice throw by Chad Swank, his first touchdown of the season. So Rutgers will attempt the point after. Steve Barone, the hold, and he did not get it inside the goalpost. Barone pushed it left, and Rutgers does not convert. We'll return. This is Big East football from ESPN+. Plus.
12 minutes and four seconds remaining in the game. Rutgers on the board, 50 to six they trail. Mike Crispino, John Congemi with you. Scoring drive with nine plays, 80 yards. Chad Schwenk, seven of eight for 51 yards on the drive and he has had a pretty good game despite all that pressure on him. You're right, he's had a good night when he's had time to throw the football and he's looked to his targets outside. Walter King's had a good night, Earl Johnson's had a good night, and Jason Oheen catching the touchdown there. Miami bringing a lot of people, a lot of pressure, but he beats him with the throw. Well, Butch Davis, who uh, had been rumored a number of times in the last couple of years as going back to the NFL, has turned it around at Miami. But who knows what the future holds? It seems to me he could take over an NFL franchise. I still think there's some validity to that. I, th I think he may go. It's just a matter of time. I don't know when that timetable will run out at the University of Miami. But right now, he's been there. He's been through some tough times at Miami trying to rebuild that program. He's got a wealth of talent now. So we'll see what happens next week when they face Florida State. That will be a big measuring stick. Here's the kick in the end zone. It's taken by Daryl Jones. Watch out. He broke it. Jones near midfield, down the sidelines, and he could go all the way, but he stepped out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Daryl Jones nearly broke it for 100 yards. He went 74 yards until he steps out of bounds. The speedster from Dallas, Texas, Daryl Jones going down the sidelines. But let me tell you what, he hit that hole up the middle, a 74-yard kick return. Just a perfect play on special teams. Miami's been aggressive all night returning the football on special teams. They don't let it bounce when it, before a punt hits the ground. They, they're very aggressive, and they always do the right thing. Jones comes out of the same high school in Dallas. Carter, that uh, Jesse Armstead, the Giants Evans linebacker who lives not far away from here in Piscataway, New Jersey. As a member of the Giants, they've got the Titans this weekend. Here's the fake, and that play has worked tonight a number of times. Wide open, headed for the end zone and stopped just short. Robert Williams, that bootleg by Ethnic Sands was operated earlier by Ken Dorsey, and that created a touchdown. Both of them have had success on that play. That one goes for 28 yards down to the one yard line. They're trying to get everybody into the end zone tonight. Robert Williams, the big fullback who replaced Nijay Davenport at the fullback spot. Just a huge play, good downfield blocking. Miami's knocking at the door again. From the two yard line, first and goal. The clock running. Man in motion is Jason Gethers. A hand back to big number 80, and Rutgers stands him up. Robert Williams, the tight end, who's been getting some carries tonight, was stuffed, and he's down. He might be hurt. He took a big shot right up upstairs, it looked like, and he's in a lot of pain right now. Tried to go in between the tackles, but there were a lot of red jerseys in there still playing football for the Scarlet Knights. He is holding his knee. Let's see what happened. We can take a look back. Robert Williams just pumping his legs, and you can see one arm wrapped around a knee. That's what possibly could have happened, twisting and turning right there. Looked like his knee might have been hyperextended. We had one Rutgers player on his left leg the entire time, and that's where it looks like the injury took place. So Robert Williams is down, being attended to. Rob Phillips, the strength and conditioning coach. As they try to manipulate that knee. Stadium has been virtually emptied out by Miami's dominance tonight. And he's going to try to get off the field under his own power. Here's Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator for Miami. He's done a nice job. Early in this football game, they really did a good job spreading the football to all the wide receivers. The tight end got into the game. Nijay Davenport and James Jackson had some touches running between the tackles, a screen play that was very successful early. So he's done a nice job spreading the football around. And Rutgers has been hurt by the uh, injury bug on the defensive side. No Dennis McCormack, the linebacker on the outside. Nate Leonard on the inside. Will Burnett had been coming on at defensive end, so 
in talking with Terry uh, Shea on Friday, he knew it was going to be a difficult task to try to contain Miami with three you know, key defensive people unable to go. Yeah, in, in Rutgers defense, you have to play the perfect game when you're going up against the Virginia Techs of the world in Miami because, you know, right off the get-go, even if you've got everybody, sometimes they just outspeed your out at the at the outside positions, the running back positions, the linebacker, defensive back. You have to play an air-free perfect football game, and if you don't come close to that, you end up with scores like 50 to 6. That's where we stand with 11 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Second and two, single back Jason Gethers has the handoff sweeping left and he'll walk into the end zone for the touchdown. Jason Gethers, Miami touchdown. Miami on the board once again and Larry Coker has to be delighted with the way it's gone tonight for the offense. Just an explosion of speed out of the University of Miami at running back there, number three, Jason Gathers goes off the left tackle, uses it, it's really a dead sprint to the pylon, untouched for another hurricane touchdown. Miami has dominated the series played between the two. They've won all seven. The last three, now four, they've scored over 50 points. The extra point is good, 57 to six. We shall return to Piscataway. The Hurricanes are rolling it up. This is Big East football from ESPN Plus. Back at Rutgers Stadium, Piscataway, New Jersey. Miami Hurricanes, 12th ranked or 10th ranked, depending on which poll you follow. 57 to 6, 10.50 remaining. So one blemish for the Hurricanes tonight. The touchdown scored by Rutgers here in the fourth quarter. Vaughn Calhoun, defensive back, a sophomore, back to receive this kickoff from Todd Sievers. He's done a good job of getting it into the end zone, but not this time. Fielded at the 10-yard line and returned to the 21. Ron Simone returned the kickoff. Ron Simone. And there's the defensive Tackle coordinator, Greg Schiano. Seems like he's having a good night, but are you kidding? <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, they That's just not scored. Edible. Greg, he's not a happy camper. They've only scored six points. Imagine if they scored another touchdown. And you know what they say about those microphones with the cover? That's not good. A little ketchup, you uh, never know. I don't know. <laughs> those are just germ catchers. That's what those things are. He'll wake up with the flu next His week. His mom will give him a call later tonight. <laughs> Don't you ever do that again. All right, so tell me what that's about. You're looking for perfection, and you don't get it. That's exactly right. You want the shutout. If you're a defensive coordinator, it doesn't matter where you're playing on the playground anywhere, you want to shut the other person out. Jason Oheen, All the, the short ball, gain that time on the handoff to Jason Oheen. You're watching Saturday Night Big East Football from Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway. 12th ranked Miami rolling it up 57 to 6. I'm Mike Crispino along with John Kinjemi. The golden arm from the University of Pittsburgh and Rob Brooks with us too. I'm surprised Terry Shea didn't just ring you up and maybe <laughs> see if you could get a uniform Definitely on and see out what of you could do. Mike. Schwenk throws it up for grabs and it's out of bounds. Now it does resemble a bit of a schoolyard game. Yeah, right now it's, it's time to go ahead and draw something up in the dirt and in the grass because there's a lot of pressure all night on Schwenk and this is it's actually, I'm getting tired of watching him be so athletic to just catch a snap from center. It's got to be a tough day. And then you have someone like big number 76, Carlos Joseph, all 305 pounds of him on his back. It's been a rough two games, if you take into account last year's game against Miami for this young quarterback, Chad Swain. I notice there's this particular sensitivity by you to quarterbacks. A nice catch made in the flat and a good move, knocked out of bounds. Jason Oheen and an extra marker goes down for a late hit. And uh, there'll be some yardage tacked on to that game, which will move the Scarlet Knights up near midfield. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. 
another high snap and just a toss out in the flat. Great catch by Jason Oheen. Let's take a look at the late hit on the sidelines. You can definitely see right there, they keep pushing him out of bounds. It wasn't so much the severity of the hit, it was where it happened. I guess he was a good two, three, four yards out of bounds, but great concentration and great catch by the, by the uh, Rutgers running back. So first and 10 from the 48, Schwenk throws high off the hands of the intended receiver, Aaron Martin, the sophomore getting some playing time. He comes out of Bergen Catholic in Ringwood, New Jersey. Still in progress, Syracuse at the Carrier Dome, 42-7 over BYU. LSU hanging on, 31-23 over Tennessee in the fourth quarter. Wow. And Oregon State puts the hammer down on the Trojans. 31-21. So that, I believe, John, was the fourth top 10 team to lose today. Yeah, Paul Hackett not happy. Swank pulls it down and into Miami territory. Gain of five. Nebraska's hanging in. They've scored 42, and they are the top-ranked team in the country. 42-24. But earlier, some other upsets. Clemson number seven won. Virginia Tech won. And K-State won in the top 10. But Washington did not. Yeah, also Mississippi State. In. Schwenk, the throw, and that one went right through the hands of L.J. Smith. Tight end Smith has had a pretty decent night for Rutgers. That was the first ball he's really dropped. Yeah, it's a big target over the middle for Chad Swank, and he's done a nice job. That one going right through the hand, just a lack of concentration being out of this game, 57 to six. Sometimes you'll have a lapse like that as a wide receiver. Fourth and four, 9-10 left, they're gonna kick. So they'll punt it from, and that snap is too ball. high. Barr's kick is high. Fair catch called for and taken at the 10 yard line and another penalty flag goes down as interfering with that catch was Nathan Jones as Daryl Jones made the catch but it'll go against Rutgers. It's been a bad night for Rutgers as far as penalties. John they came in the least penalized team in the Big East. 12 men on the field during the play. And that time Rutgers had 12 men on the field. Being attended to, maybe it's equipment, maybe it's an injury, let's see. One of the Scarlet Knights. Looks like that's Jason O'Hean, the uh, running back on the sidelines, but what else could ha possibly happen to Rutgers? Illegal participation on the defense, 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, first down. Illegal participation was the call, a 15-yard penalty. No, I don't think much more could happen negatively to Rutgers tonight. Well, there's one positive. They will get the football back, and there you see Mike McMahon on the sidelines. And really would have been a, a probably a better outcome early in this football game. You can't really put the, the blame on Chad Swank. He did a nice job, but the career of Mike McMahon in a situation, you see his numbers right there. He's thrown for over 5,200 yards. 34 touchdowns and 40 interceptions, but you have to give credit. Chad Swank, a tough competitor, tough kid at the quarterback position for Rutgers. So Rutgers maintains possession. The penalty for illegal participation went against Miami, and the Scarlet Knights have another chance here. You're talking about Mike McMahon, as far as all time Rutgers records, he's third in terms of yardage, Scott Ernie the all-time leader, Ray Lucas, the Jets' backup quarterback, is second. And if McMahon can get healthy, he would probably pass Ray Lucas in all-time yardage and be number two. But the question is, is he healthy? Sore shoulder, MRI, came out clean earlier this week, but he's feeling pain, so he didn't play tonight. And that ball knocked up and nearly caught. L.J. Smith. Couldn't make the catches, Mike McMahon. We were talking the fact he's been banged up, and it happened last year. 
Virginia Tech on a carry. He gets into the end zone and snapped his shoulder back. Stayed in the game, threw this touchdown. For Rutgers and came out in pain, as you can see. And would not return that particular day. And he got hit again last week on a sack. And uh, John, you know, as a, as a quarterback, a shoulder problem has got to be something that is difficult to overcome. Yeah, an arm problem, shoulder, elbow, whatever it is, it's tough for a quarterback to go out and function. You can see in that game he did come back, throw the touchdown pass, but I think last week being injured and having the injury previous to that last year, probably a little bit too much of a combination of pain and discomfort and really not being able to throw the football. And you see another Rutgers player down. It looked like number 85, L.J. Smith, down the tight end who's been productive for Rutgers tonight. Well, McMahon had surgery off season, came back feeling well, but then another hit, as I mentioned, the sack. So I think it, it probably has put in a little question in his mind as to his complete health. Probably, when you have an injury to your shoulder, you know, that's what you do. And there's another injury, uh, looks like Frazier for. That is, uh, Anthony Frazier, the defensive back, being carted off. Rob Brooks has an update on that. Rob? Yeah, Mike. The freshman from the Pennington School has a strained right hip. He told the doctors that he could walk off the field, but they want to carry him off. They're going to take him inside and get an X-ray. But right now, they say the X-ray is just precautionary. They're calling it a strained right hip. All right. Thanks to Rob Brooks. Well, every picture tells a story, as Rod Stewart once said. And that's the picture of the story. Out. What a hit delivered by Marquise Fitzgerald. Number 27 just separated the receiver from the ball. That's exactly what you want to do as a defensive back. As fast as the ball came in from the quarterback, that's how fast it went back towards the quarterback right there. Just a full head of steam is number 27, Marquise Fitzgerald. And uh, no more biting on that, uh, Coach. There he goes. Sean Carty was the intended receiver, and I'm sure he'll be shaking some cobwebs out. And the flat, Rayvon Anderson. Close to a first down. Pass was complete to Rayvon Anderson. Driven out of bounds by Darrell Weaver. Schwank has completed 19 passes tonight, but how about that number, John? Oh, the drops kill you. I mean, he's had so many b passes batted down at the line of scrimmage, 15 of those, and those are all gimme completions because they're trying to dink and dunk against Miami early, but the drop passes kill you. We talked about having Rutgers has to play close to perfect Bus to stay up with Miami. Well, if you're going to have a night that you drop 10 balls, I don't care if you're playing against air, you're not going to have success. Well, Mike McMahon can do nothing helplessly sitting there. Well, he's got another week off. They've got Temple in two weeks, as I mentioned. And I'm sure the Scarlet Knights are hoping that Mike McMahon can return to action with six games remaining. We'll return to Piscataway. This is Big East football from ESPN Plus. Back at Rutgers, 57 to 6, 809 remaining in the fourth. Rob Brooks has an injury update from the sidelines. Frazier had a string. Okay. We'll get to that after this play as he's. Trying to find out what happened to the most recent Scarlet Knight who went down. The carry-off tackle, a penalty marker down. And uh, the tackle made there on Jason Gathers. Now let's go down to Rob Brooks. Rob? A strained left hip. Anthony Frazier had a strained right hip. LJ has a strained left hip. All the Rutgers people down here kind of holding their breath. LJ has really emerged this year. He was third in the team in receptions, and they're going to take him inside and give that some further examination, guys. Thanks to Rob Brooks. That's one thing you don't want to come out of a game like this with further injury troubles. Yeah, at least they have the week off next week before they do go to play Temple. Looked like a penalty on Miami. The Miami uh, Hurricane offense walking back towards their own goal line. So the Canes, who were up 14-0 after one on two James Jackson touchdowns and got a couple more touchdown passes from Ken Dorsey in the second quarter. And another run by James Jackson. We're up 41 0 in halftime. And they have continued to play well in the second half. Breaking out into the open on the run. Jason Gathers. And he will be cut off inside the 30 yard line. 
Jason Gathers nearly broke it for another touchdown. Well, any way you can get the ball in this freshman's arms via the pass run, he's done a great job. Jason Gathers, the freshman wide receiver, now playing running back. We mentioned the injuries to Clinton Portis, and that's why he's playing running back now for the second half. He's done a terrific job of busting that big run down the sidelines. Miami threatening again. Already ahead by 51 points. And the out pattern still on his feet and finally blasted out of bounds. Andre Johnson, another freshman from Miami. He's 6'3", 220. And the tackle finally applied by Bill Hambrick. Number 45. They've got some size at the freshman position at the wide receiver. You see there, number five, Andre Johnson just getting battered on the sidelines but keeps his feet. Big, strong, wide receiver. 6'3", 220 pounds. And take a look at those total yards, Mike. Miami with 531 on the night. And off, oh, nice move right there by Gathers. Took a step back, actually. Gained a couple of extra yards. The time can't run out fast enough for Rutgers right now as Gethers is down and he's not getting up right away. So a concern for Miami. They cannot afford injury with Florida State coming up. Gethers is down. Looking at his right ankle. He's played a heck of a second half for this Miami team for a young, young player. He's done a great job. And while they attend to Jason Gethers, will return. This is Big East football from ESPN. Plus. Miami on the Rutgers doorstep trying to score another touchdown. Under seven minutes remaining. They have second and eight from the 11. Handoff to the big tight end who's been handling the ball and carrying it tonight. And with some success, I might add, Robert Williams. Gain of about three. It seems like if you're healthy and you have a number that's lower than 10 and higher than 80, you're going to get the <laughs> ball in the second half for Miami because everybody's touched the football. Freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. You see Butch Davis on the sidelines there wanting his team to compete, come out, and stay healthy. That's what the biggest thing right now. You want your players to stay healthy in this football game. It's tough to do that. You're playing football. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't not look to get injured because that's not the kind of game it is. So it's almost a game of chance. Sweep right, great blocking, and into the end zone, number 29, James Scott. The sophomore from Crescent City, Florida, has boosted Miami over the 60 mark. Now, James Scott has played some running back last season when they had some injuries. He's moved to defensive back, so we've had a wide receiver, a tight end, and now a defensive back carry the football for Miami, and he's having some fun on the sidelines. There you see Coach Don Solinger, the running backs coach, saying, Coach, you got to bring me back on your side of the football. I did okay, one for one. That might be a once in a lifetime opportunity. 64 to 6. Miami. A defensive back has scored one. This is Big East football from ESPN Plus. Board for the Miami Hurricanes and six. For Rutgers, a couple of missed extra points. It would be 65 to 7 as we're ready for yet another kickoff from the Hurricanes with 6-0-1 remaining. You see Vaughn Calhoun, a sophomore defensive back, back to receive the kick and a new kicker for Miami. Torrey Mitchell's going to take a shot at it. He's a freshman from Big Spring, Texas. Well, a different number and a different name. Lundy gets the kickoff. Dan Lundy's kickoff goes out of bounds. The flags go up. Well, Mike Crispino, John Kajemi, by the way, this is the, my scorecard. I've run out of room. Can I borrow yours? I, you, you might have Thank to you because there much. might be some more names on there that Miami's going to use to run the football. Uh, John, I'll tell you what, uh, Rutgers has to regroup from something like this and you know there's going to be some pressure on Terry Shea it's been a tough week for him 
Mom passes away on Wednesday, then this on Saturday. I mean, down the road, this Scarlet Knights team has got to well, got to bounce back and do something for him. You're right. And Miami on the other side of that coin making a statement. Since they lost to Washington, they've outscored their opponents 111 to 16. That's a that's a big lopsided score right there. Well, West Virginia Boy, felt the wrath last here. week in Morgantown. You score 47 against Don Nealon's team in, in West Morgantown, Virginia. Right. That should have been you know, an eyebrow razor as Rutgers was looking at film this week, and I'm sure they knew the impact of what Miami could do, but I don't think they expected anything like this. Well, anytime you could get your offense to start rolling, and it all starts with the quarterback and that offensive line, but then the defense, they score three scores last week, they have two this week. You know, a lot of things happen. When you start to gel as a team, it couldn't happen at a better time for the University of Miami. They're playing their best football. They'll go to three and one with Florida State coming up. And Tackle for no gain right there. As Miami's defense stiffening up even more. That tackle made by Jim Wilson getting a chance to play. He's a sophomore. Rob Brooks has more for us from the sideline. Rob? Earlier, John called it a beautiful night for football, and it is, unless you're used to the tropical climate <laughs> of Miami. The starters who've been out most of the second half are now complaining that they are freezing cold, but the equipment manager, Bobby Revere, practicing a little tough love. He offered them all thermals earlier. They declined, so he said, you guys got to live with it till the end of the game. Thank you, Rob. What is wrong with you guys from Florida? Can't you tell? This is only fall weather the here. blood thins out after a while. Look at this. Oh, it's picked off. The interception by James Scott, still on his feet inside the 30 that one went in and out of the hands of the receiver Aaron Martin and the man that just scored a touchdown carrying the ball now intercepts he might get another opportunity now to go back in this wasn't a bad throw this time from Chad Swank he put it he got it into the receivers hands right there you got to make that catch it's just a tip drill going the other way number 29 James Scott gets a pick that was a good, good throw by Chad Swink, moving the clock, moving the pocket outside, but take a look at the pop right here. Right there, he gets nailed from behind by number 95, Jerome McDougal from Miami. I want to correct myself, it was Sean Carty that had the reception in hand but couldn't come down with it, and it ended up in Miami's hand. So 421 remaining. Miami with 64 on the board, handing off to the big Robert tight Williams end. Carried. Robert Williams has never carried it this much, I'll say that. He's a tight end, now playing running back tonight. So Butch Davis looks ahead to Florida State, that one at the Orange Bowl, and at Temple, the improved Owls, Bobby Wallace, Louisiana Tech, and then a monster game. Virginia Tech at home, you know, Florida State and Virginia Tech, you mentioned it, 0 for 10 against them. They got them both at home this year. This could be the year for Miami. And it looks like Miami's peaking at the right time. You want to go into that Florida State game. It's a huge interstate rivalry, and, and it'll have national implications on what happens down the road. So Miami has to play well next week against Florida State at home, and that's critical, Mike. Uh, later on, they have Pittsburgh at home. So really, the schedule, the way it's laid out, the toughest opponents come at home. Yeah, it's very favorable for the University of Miami. That's why that Washington loss a couple of weeks back was huge. If they win that game on the road, the table is set for them to run the table. Well, Syracuse is a road game on uh, the 18th of November, and then they'll wrap it up with Boston College at home, but you're right. I mean, Miami, if they could defeat Florida State and get by Virginia Tech, they have to be considered a top five team at least. A handoff inside, but off what uh, folks saw, Florida State against Maryland. There's going to be a lot of points scored yeah. in this game next week. You know, there's going to be a lot of hitting, and there's going to be a lot of talking during the week as normal, but you know, both teams are very good at what they do. Florida State runs that no-huddle offense. They like to out-game you on the outside. They've got a lot of firepower. Miami now, the offensive line, getting a little bit of feet underneath them, got a little confidence going. So I think it'll be a tough physical football game as usual. And it normally comes down to the kicking game and field position, what happens, you know, with the punters, with the kickers, and with the turnovers. All right, so it's fourth and three. They're gonna run the ball. And they'll be stopped short of a first down. Rutgers will take over on downs. 
You know, one thing, uh, John, that I have noticed about Miami since Butch Davis took over, very little of the showmanship and the extra mustard and all that stuff that got Miami in so much trouble, very businesslike, and they just take care of what they should do and they don't flaunt it, they don't stick it in your face, and I think that's certainly one of the areas that Butch Davis has had a real positive influence on this program. Well, it got Miami to national recognition, their playability and really talking, and then Butch Davis comes in, he, he had a lot of sanctions going against him. He couldn't recruit as many players under scholarship as he would have liked. So Miami was kind of a, a, a middle-of-the-board team. You know, they were good some weeks, some weeks they weren't. And now this is really the first year that he's had a full allotment of scholarships and he's been able to put a team on the field that he could put his stamp on. And I think he's very proud of what he's putting on the football field. It looks to me like he's uh, recruited some character players. Syracuse winning big against BYU. Lavelle Edwards last time around for him. Wow. Tennessee has come all the way back. They were down three touchdowns. They're even at 31 at Baton Rouge. Corn Hus Huskers winning 42-24 in the fourth. And uh, the number one team looks like they will hang on. So a quarterback change here in the final couple minutes. Michael Jones, he's a senior from Richmond, Virginia. Over center in the final minute 24. Jones with a handoff and a big opening. And a good game up near the 40-yard line for Vaughn Calhoun. Tackle by James Scott. James Scott made the tackle. James Scott has been everywhere in this fourth quarter for the University of Miami. He's got a pick. He scored a touchdown. Now he comes up from like a blur from the strong safety position for a tackle. Like the uniform change Miami made. Jazzing it up a little bit with orange Some flashes. Final minute and another snap goes awry and the fumble's not picked up. Down on it, it could be Miami's ball. Looked like big number 76, Carlos Joseph, the defensive tackle, may have jumped on the football for Miami. It is Miami's ball as everything that could go wrong did go wrong for Rutgers tonight. Fumbled snaps, interceptions returned for touchdowns. And that one is the quarterback's fault. Yeah, that one should have been caught, but you know, you stand on the sidelines all game and Mike Jones tries to come in and make the play and there you see a mad dash, a scramble for the football. Miami eventually picking it up with 44 seconds left to go. In this football game, it's been one-sided. Miami Hurricanes have done a great job taking advantage of being efficient early in the game and now just playing out the role of spoiler for Rutgers. They really haven't gotten anything going. Rutgers came in uh, to the game not being penalized, but penalized, turning the football over as they did you know, throughout this football game. And Miami definitely has been very dominant. Uh, Miami, let's see if they run any plays. I would think they'd take a knee here. Leading by 58 points with 28 seconds remaining. Ken Dorsey had a big night, threw for three touchdowns. So did Najee Davenport, the junior, and James Jackson as well for Miami. And they'll take a knee, and that will just about do it. Final seconds ticking off. Miami Hurricanes have completely dominated Rutgers tonight, 64 to six. Butch Davis, Terry Shea meeting near the 40 yard line. We shall return. This is Big East football from ESPN Plus. Over in New Jersey, Miami 64, Rutgers six. Hurricanes to three and one. Rutgers goes to two and three. Ken Dorsey, outstanding tonight. Three touchdown passes. James Jackson, three touchdowns. Most points ever scored by an opponent at Rutgers, 64. Once again, the final 64-6. For John Kajemi, Rob Brooks, and our ESPN Plus crew, I'm Mike Crispino. Thanks for joining us.